come in. We're live. Put on your big girl panties. Hank Strange and crew, we're in the building. We're going to cause trouble. It's free for all Monday. That's right. So that means you guys tell us the subjects. Hit us up with your comments, questions. We'll talk about anything. That's right. Including and especially boobs. Especially boobs. We'll talk about anything tonight. So joining me, joining me, I'm live in the Big Daddy Gun studio. Joining me live from his studios, Babyface P. What's up, my friend? Just stop. Not much. We missed you this weekend. We were all getting soaking wet. Where were you? I know. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I was getting a haircut. <laughs> yeah. So um, thanks, thanks for joining us. Uh, I know you're going to have some cool things you want to talk about. We've also got Mr. Kevin Dixie. Kevin, what's up, man? What's going on? How you doing? Good, good. So we're going to, um, I know you're going to talk to us in a second here. Um, you have an event coming up, right? Yes, sir. We do. I'm so excited to talk about it. Absolutely. Aiming for the truth. Stay tuned, guys. We're going to talk about that in a second. After I introduce father and son duo, the dynamic duo, Walter <laughs> Keller and Will Killer Keller. Yeah. <laughs> from, from Safety Harbor Firearms. Will doesn't like that. <laughs> but it's going to stick now, Will. I don't know. Yeah, it's happening. It's going down. Okay, so... Um, you know what? Let me let me go back to uh, let me go back to Kevin and Kevin. Tell us about uh, your event that's coming up. All righty. So on the screen here, what we want to do is we're trying to take a pretty much a Second Amendment approach to addressing violence and um, doing it in a way you don't see a lot. So instead of doing an anti-violence event uh, where we're screaming, you know, put down a gun, put down a gun as, as if the gun is at fault, we want to kind of change that around a little bit. So um, the name of the event is going to be held on Saturday, August the fifth. At, uh, if you're in St. Louis, it's at 1488 Belt Avenue in St. Louis, Missouri at the Good Samaritan Baptist Church. The name of the event is Aiming for the Truth, uh, while we're going to be citing in on the real issues. So we're going to aim for the truth to the root causes of violence. What is really causing people to go to desperate measures and commit violence? And let's take a more aggressive approach than simply you know, taking a comp out and blaming a tool. So what we're going to do is uh, talk about some of the bigger, uh, bigger subject matters. On the screen and that, um, that advertisement, you can see uh, around the target, mental illness, economic status, uh, gun control history, because you need to understand why people are so adamant about firearms and firearms ownership and the education that comes with it. Uh, family structures, uh, how is the family plan playing a part in people committing violent acts? Child development, how are we developing children? What are we giving them to do uh, for they can grow up and be productive members of society? And also training and safety. So when we start thinking about people who being properly educated with guns, especially children, but everybody. I think if you're educated on something, you naturally get a more profound respect for it. Um, so all those different subject matters are going to have subject matter experts on site. So for mental illness, we're going to have those professionals, economic status. We're going to have a couple of bank professionals. Um, gun control, of course, I'll talk about that. Family structure, we're going to have a family therapist there to help out with that. Child development, we'll have uh, schools on site. We're also working on getting the Boy Scouts to show up. Uh, for they can give kids something different to do and it's a little bit more cost effective than your local basketball or football program and then training and safety for every uh, family that attends we're going to talk about it there but for every family that attends we're going to announce a big event later on about 30 to 45 days out they're all going to be able to come bring the entire family nephews nieces kids mom dad whomever uh, they get to come out to the safety event for free um, and then we try to add in a, a something different for people for they can understand that we really want to help all right so if you come you get to have your kids watch for free. So if you have small kids that can't sit still, we're gonna have a licensed daycare facility on site watching those kids for free for you. And they're they're gonna be they're gonna be having a, a good time with basically a miniature carnival outside. Right. Uh, if Walter if Walter comes, who's gonna watch him? Because um, he's like a toddler. Right, now, right now we're listening to you. Mommy! We're gonna have we're gonna have the police there for Walter. Yeah, oh, you, thank you. you need some serious crowd oh, control. They need somebody. Walter, to, they need somebody for the dog to bite. That's what it is. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna feed people for free. We're gonna try to have a good time. We're gonna reimburse them if they catch public transportation. So we're gonna okay. we're gonna really dig into the issues instead of just so that's what the event's about. Okay, so hit us up. When is this uh, event again? When is it taking place? It is gonna be Saturday, August the fifth. We're okay. gonna have two sessions. It's in uh it's at Good Samaritan Baptist Church in St. Louis, Missouri at one four eight eight belt, just like a belt you were around your waist, belt avenue. Uh that's six three one one two is the zip code. Okay, so is that a is that about what two weeks? I'm just trying to. Uh, it's roughly two weeks away. Yeah. 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 Okay. Two weeks. And how we're many, gonna have, 
two sessions. We're going to have one from 1 to 2.30 and then one from 3 to 4.30. And that is also going to include the interactive traffic stop where we have the police officer that's going to be there with us walking us through a traffic stop step by step. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I like the idea of doing an event like this. I mean, of course, as gun guys, you know, we we don't like the idea of uh, random gun violence either, you know. Right. And so usually people want to, to just say, you know what, here's my solution. Get rid of all the guns. Exactly. So I like the fact that you guys are, you know, taking a different approach on that and not blaming it on the gun, which is just an inanimate object. Yep. You know, and there's lots of objects out there that people can use to uh, get into violence. Uh, are you guys going to specifically talk about that? Like some of the, you know, the different other things out there that people use to, you know, to cause like mass destruction or? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, in the promo video for it that I share with all you guys, in the promo mm -hmm. video, uh, you can actually see um, it's, it happened here in East St. Louis, so right across the bridge from us, a young lady decided to mow four or five people down with a car. Wow. And that's an advertisement video, and that, that's a mental thing that had nothing to do with the tool she used. Um, so that's an example. So we are definitely going to talk to people about violence and what's causing people to react violent. And that's why when we tie in gun control history, that's a way of saying stop blaming the gun and stop giving people fuel because there's a history behind the gun and you need to be aware of that. So going forth, you understand how you need to protect that and stop blaming it and really deal with people and the issues people go through. Okay, cool. Yeah, so what I did was while you were talking about it, I did um, add that link to the description for anyone who wants to check it out. Um, I don't know if the other guys have any questions about it. If folks out there do have questions, hit us up. Kevin's gonna, uh, we're gonna talk about it several times. We'd like to help him out, get people to come out to this event. Um, how many people are you expecting right now? Man, you know, I don't know. We've, we've had, as far as exposing it to people, you know, we've had a, a pretty decent turnout. The facility uh, can fit up to 225 per session. I would like to max it out for both. Um, if we can get, you know, I don't know, even half of that in there, that'd be good. But I think everybody should come out. All right, cool. All right. And we'll we'll share this up on our different Facebooks and stuff like that as well. So, you know, any questions, guys? Comments on this? Uh, Sounds like a pretty well-rounded well program. No, well, thank you. So yeah, yeah. I don't have many questions then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, we're like a little, you know, we're a little distant, so we're we're probably not going to make it. But I definitely encourage people to go out there. And uh, are you guys doing any video at this event? Are you going to film it, make a video out of it? Oh yeah, we're going to have a couple of videographers there uh, walking around, interviewing people, and just recording the event. So we can share kind of the 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 goings on of it, if you will. We'll probably have a couple of people uh, doing certain parts, Facebook Live as well. Uh, okay. You know, so we're going to do everything we can to, you know, before the event, push it out there during and after, you know, so we can do this annually. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, Chris B was asking, uh, how are the gun laws in St. Louis and then and Missouri? Missouri, um, I would, it's funny. I normally only rank Missouri behind a couple of states, but we're definitely, um, we're definitely up there. The last 10 years, we made some great strides. Uh, we just got our concealed carry process in 2003. Um, and when it hit, it, it took off. So like every four or five years, we take another big step. So I would I would argue that we're in the top five. As far in as St. Louis? Um, St. Louis in the state of Missouri. Now, St. Louis City yeah. is itself very anti-gun. But thank God we have a state that's pro-guns and it supersedes. <laughs> If you have a concealed yeah. uh, carry permit here, it supersedes anything the city has. And, and you mentioned East St. Louis, which was, is in Illinois, and that's a zoo over there from what I understand. Yeah, East St. Louis is controlled by Illinois. It's, it's outside of St. Louis, so it's a whole yeah. it's a whole different world, man. You, we don't have reciprocity with them, so we can't carry our guns over there. Crazy part is they can come right across the bridge with theirs, but we can't go over there. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty terrible, right there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's called East St. Louis, but you can't. Yeah, you know, that doesn't mean anything. It right? don't. It don't have a real good reputation out in the world. So okay. no, it's it's one of those places that it is. It's truly. It's filled with a lot of wonderful people. To be honest with you, the pro and a, a lot of those people have a ton of pride in the history of that city. It has a lot of um, history that this country was built off of. East St. Oh. Louis has really been through yeah. a lot. Problem. East to west, yeah. The people that run it now, the well that have been running for the last thirty or forty years, man, just don't. I mean, every time you you turn on the news, is somebody else over there getting arrested for being a crooked politician? That seems to be a thing with Illinois. Politicians <laughs> really? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. 
that's like the tradition, man. If you, if you know, if that's you're like not stealing from the people, you're not doing it right. That's right. like New, that's like New Orleans too. New Orleans has that problem too. Oh yeah, yeah. you mean you mean the the city that allow people to go door to door and take firearms from people doing Katrina? Yeah, that one. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. That, Lots of bad things happened during Katrina. Okay, I'm not trying to change the subject here. I want to shout out. We've got some like friends that are in the uh, in the chat uh, uh, from Simon Says Train. Tony, he was here on the show. I also see El Tenda and the Fire Mountain Outdoor guys, who are you know good friends of mine. I don't know if you guys know them, but they're they're welcome to come on the show. But they're hanging out in the chat. So thanks for hanging out in the chat. And what's up to everybody else out there in the chat? Hit us up with uh, whatever questions, comments, and topics and things like that you guys want to talk about. So um, let's see. Who who should we? Walter, you were telling us about something kind of interesting. I have to see how real this is. <laughs> oh, about the Stargate? Yeah, go ahead. Explain this to us. I don't know. It, this is probably not real, right? I just, I just found it um, going somewhere. I think it was on Facebook or something, so it's got to be real. Um, sure. <laughs> the, I don't think so. The West invaded Iraq. <laughs> Because Sodom has a, had a Stargate. Is this from Alex Jones? <laughs> you guys didn't know that was true? <laughs> yeah, okay. I, that's like a well known fact. <laughs> that, okay, that, right. <laughs> Baby face, come on, don't, don't. <laughs> We're just trying to get him started. <laughs> that, that, could, that could be a, considered a weapon of mass destruction, though. I mean, you know, come on, travel time. Um, listen, isn't that where they made the Stargate movie? Is anyone considering, like, do we, do we have pictures and stuff like that? Maybe they just left some stuff over from the set. I don't know. Maybe maybe Uday and Kuse ran it. Who knows? I don't uh -huh. know. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. So what's what's the basis for this story? Um, it's. I think it was some um, some professor someplace. Believe it or not. Let's see. We're looking into it now. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. It's kind I, of I don't really believe it. I'm not falling for any more stories. That's like how uh, the firearm blog or whoever that was. Oh, they got week. you. They got you. Yeah. You know. So. <laughs> I'm not going for it. Not oh, yet. okay. Something so it, about going back to the, the, it's been there since Mesopotamia. Yeah, you know? yeah. So Iraq being it's in Samaria and Mesopotamia, they're saying it yeah. goes all the way back to there, and they use this secret technology to travel <laughs> to other worlds. Yeah. Okay. Oh well. Um, so, uh, okay. I'm yeah, just gonna call how, bullshit on this one. How I don't, that is. We don't even have to like research it or look into it or anything like that. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> Don't expect any androgynous overlords <laughs> to come from spaceships and start ruling us. You did see the movie Stargate, right, Walter? I know you're talking about Stargate, and you've actually seen the movie. And and there was a TV show, correct? Yes, there was a TV yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, did yeah. you see? Okay, but that's not right, answering right, my just, question. Just, just stop. Yes, 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 yes to everything. Yes. <laughs> you're lying. I don't believe you. I watched a TV show. How about that? Did I qualify? Uh, no. Mm -mm. Oh, it does. Yes, it does. No, it does. It did. Did you see the movie? Yes, or I no? probably did at some point, but it didn't. <laughs> it didn't. You know, it didn't. It, yeah, I don't sure. like that. I don't know. It's I don't a movie know. and the TV show is a, a very incredibly diff different. But you know, know, you can't. You can't. We can't put you in fanboy category if you never no, actually no, saw no, the movie. No. no. Yeah. I, I, if you did see the movie, you would know what I meant when I said we won't have like androgynous overlords. Because the the uh, the bad guy in the movie, the uh, the chief alien was like androgynous. You know, you oh. know what that is, right? Yeah, it's uh, so, either, yeah. Either way. Yeah. Well, you couldn't tell if it was like a girl or a boy. Right, right. I think that guy was. I think he was uh, also in the Crying Game. Someone's gonna. Have, <laughs> someone yeah. has to IMDb <laughs> that. But I think that that was the guy from the Crying Game that tricked uh, Forrest Whitaker. Did anyone see? No one saw the Crying Game. Walter, <laughs> did you see the no. He's by himself right now. <laughs> Where's Walter? You Walter doesn't even, some, he doesn't talk, even know. You don't even know what. <laughs> you want to talk about some guns? Okay, no, no, I don't. I don't oh, okay. want to talk about guns yet. Wait about, a second. Hey, Walter, how, okay. What? What? Go ahead. Wait go a ahead. second. Have you seen have you seen the crying game? No. No? Do you so you don't know what, what we're talking about? Nope. Next. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Kevin, 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 Kevin's sitting there going the same thing. Like, what the hell are we talking about? Here? Uh, Kevin, uh, uh, <laughs> Kevin, tell him about the crying game that he's apparently never heard of. The rest of the planet has. Um, I just uh, the fact that they're putting you in that movie. Um, guard your guard yourself closely, sir. Make sure okay. you have, like a lock. Okay. 
Let's talk about Hot Wheels or something. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, okay, Walter. You want to change the subject? You're the one that brought up the Stargate, and that's how we wound up here. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. I, I should have known better. Yeah, I've been trying to tell him. Don't talk about stuff you don't know. Yeah, I'm linking anything you say. I'm gonna link it to something terrible. Okay, let's go for, for it the, for the rest of the show. Okay, Hot did you have something else? Okay, what do you want to show us? Show us that gun that you have. Go ahead. That's a Hot Wheel. You got a new Hot Wheel. It's a Hot Wheel. Here. Let's see it. Here, let me date myself. I can remember when the first Hot Wheel came out. What? So how's that? 1968, my friend. Not this one here, but I had one. So. Okay, what was it? What was the first Hot Wheel? What car was it? Uh, I don't remember exactly. I mean, I don't remember the exact car, but I had both. I had all these ones you see that they want to pay thousands of dollars for. I crashed them and bashed them all up. Oh, okay, <laughs> I would have thought. I would have thought the first Hot Wheel probably came out a long time before that. No, it was 68. 68. 68. Oh, okay, cool. Someone let us know what the first Hot Wheel car was, because I have no no idea what that was. I'm gonna guess it's a muscle car, since it was in 1968. Uh, I'm gonna guess it was. Hold on a second. Uh, a Charger. Mustang? Oh, okay. I was gonna say Mustang, but uh, might have been a. They had. Babyface, you should know this one. Yeah. Definitely not Googling it right now. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. Not, <laughs> you're cheating. <laughs> Cheater. It definitely okay. was not a uh, uh, good Volkswagen guy. bug. Oh, man. T -bug. Uh, <laughs> T -bug. Kevin, Kevin, what do you think it was? The first uh, Hot Wheels. Well, I wasn't um, a core note. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you, but you weren't around then. <laughs> um, but. I, I would assume it's definitely some kind of muscle car. I would go off and say, if it's the first one, I'm going to say some type of Chevy. A Chevy. Could have been like a Bel Air. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, Babyface, what's the answer on this one? Uh, the first one produced was a dark blue custom Camaro. Oh. Designed by Harry that. Bentley Bradley. Oh, okay, so Kevin gets that one. Kevin gets that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, by default. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I hey, I was close. I got muscle car. That's about it. Walter was going for a Volkswagen Beetle, which I I don't know. No. Yeah. Probably, I don't think... it, probably, it probably wasn't the first one, but that's one of those cars that's kind of rare for for Hot Wheels to, for the early ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Guys, do yourself a favor. Go read the live the last live comment. The last uh, live comment. Uh, kool aid Mount kind of the Somalian copies. Okay. Someone. Someone. Oh. Okay, someone wants us to. Someone wants to know if we want to start a GoFundMe for the Somali cop that yeah. um, shot the shot the uh, bride to be the Australian bride to be. You guys are gonna I feed guess. the troll? Yeah, I guess. So. Oh, hey, yeah. That, hey, troll, troll. Yeah. Let's, hey, read it. Yeah, let's. <laughs> a nice. Hey, why not? Oh, hang on. I'm gonna get. It's gonna really get him riled up. A nice Manila rope doesn't cost that much. <laughs> Okay, you know, so listen, we're, hey, we're on the subject. Let's talk about it. Um, I think, Kevin, I think you, you've got, did you have some info on this? Is there info, any new stuff that's going on with this uh, Australian woman that was shot? The last thing besides the, the most of the stuff that was known about it um, is that the he wound up saying that he was whatever loud noise. So if you guys don't know, okay, he, he got, they got a 911 call. Um, apparently, she heard a commotion of some sort in the back of her house in the alley. She called 911. Uh, police showed up. I guess she seen the police vehicle, so she ran up to the vehicle to, you know, kind of tell the cops, hey, go, you know, X amount of feet this way, and this is where I heard the noise or whatever. Um, she walked up to the, or ran or jogged or whatever to the driver's side. The driving window was down. Uh, she was talking, and apparently he heard a loud noise. There was some kind of loud noise that happened. Um, and so he reached from the passenger side across his partner and shot her. Um, and he's saying that whatever noise that was, now the last thing I read, he's saying it startled him, and that's why he fired. What? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that whole thing, uh, I don't know. That, uh, that whole thing is lots is, of stuff. Some, they need to get in some sort of trouble for not having their body cams on. Or the dash cam. <clears throat> or the dash cam, yeah. Or, or dash cam, yeah. They, they should have had both going. It's, they were responding to a call where they're going to talk. Like, so I was reading today that uh, they only need to have the dash cams turn, or the body cams in dash cam turn on if they're responding to a citizen or an accident or a scene. They were, so it seems like they should have had the cams turned on. Yeah, why doesn't it just go on all the time? I mean, I that's what I think I too. Like, that. we dash need to get to a point where it's just on 24 7 and whatever. <laughs> yeah. If you record them farting, who cares? 
Yeah, I mean, maybe there's like a hard drive limit or something like that, but I, I think that they should make it where I'm not sure what there's how long their shift would be. I don't know if they are doing like eight hour, 10 hour shifts or how long they're actually out. But if they leave the precinct from the time leaving to the time coming back, that thing should be on. OK, so yeah. let me ask, what, what, what about the par what about the partner that he shot across? What's what's happened with him? Uh, the last thing I said that the partner is only the last thing I read that the partner is only confirming the loud noise. Uh, they do remember the loud noise. Yeah. Well, uh, I know the guy himself isn't talking right because in a lot of uh, police departments, I don't know if people know this, but a lot of these guys have the right to not say anything. They don't have to talk in these investigations. They don't what, have to against the partner. You're saying no. Like they, they don't, don't have, have to, to talk at all. They don't. When something like this goes down, they don't have to say anything. So the guy who did the shooting, he's not saying anything. No, I'm talking yeah. about the partner. Oh, the partner. Yeah. Well, I think it's nonsense that they should like, I think they should be compelled when they become police officers to say what the hell happened. Well, let me, you know, let me just, you know, he reached across. I mean, this is not, this is not loaded. So he reached across in front of his guy and shot him right there. Yep. Well, that would be, what, what? Well, hold on a second. It would probably be Will in your scenario, Walter, it would probably be, well, maybe that's how I'm fit. Yeah. Will that doesn't, Either Will way. is in the position where he would be in the driver's seat because it would be a different reach across like that. Well, yeah, no. either way, <laughs> yeah. a, loud, a loud noise. Yeah, you heard a couple so the partner just down sat down. there while he was being shot at? I mean, it was no, it's then, just it's just weird. So he I heard it was firecrackers. That's yeah. what I heard. You he heard a firecracker. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Who knows what a firecracker sounds like? Uh, all who knows us. what a gun sounds like? Yeah. <laughs> it ain't yeah, the same. <laughs> it ain't the same. Much How do we? I wonder if they drug tested these guys. How do we know these guys weren't like smoking crack or something like that right before this happened? Uh, you know, there, there's a couple of things to look at with it. So it, when I read the details, uh, and not that it, it goes to what they did, but the 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 officer that did the shooting had only been on the force about two years. The other officer had been on just about a year. And what I'm very curious about when the details come out is if you reached across, okay and you got startled and you fired, was the gun already drawn on her? You got startled and you yeah. fired? Or did you get startled, pull your gun and start firing at her? I'm, I'm, I'm very, very curious about that. And did you have it out ready to go when she walked over the Yeah, and you pull a trigger discipline or whatever, and you just, you know, you, you popped off a couple of rounds or... There's a bunch of things going on. I mean, if you're his partner, he just he just discharged a weapon, you know, pretty much in your face. Yeah, you at least got like a hot shell casing or two. I don't know how many shots I, were fired. I had, I had a 30-30 go off this far from my head one time in a truck, in a car, and awesome. inside of a cab of a truck. It was like, holy shit. How did, how did that happen, Walter? <laughs> Somebody climbing into a truck with a loaded gun. What? Okay, do we, do, should we even talk about this story? <laughs> no, not really. Nobody got hurt or anything, but right. Um, it's just like, holy, what happened? There was yeah. a glass flying all over the place. But yeah, when somebody puts a gun across like this, I mean, you're gonna. What's a partner do? Just sit there? I mean, I'm like, I don't know. It's, something's weird about the whole story. Somebody's not telling the truth. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a long time before we find out what really went down here and and, uh, and unfortunately the uh, truth might not ever come out because of I don't think it will certain <clears throat> circumstances and somebody being I guess somebody said he had like three he's been written up three times already yeah um, and, and one of those cases is sealed so let me I know this is this is probably gonna uh, set some people off but let me ask a question why do we even care about this so much I think I think <laughs> anytime somebody shot by the cops yeah. it's I as mean, long as it's not cut and dry. She yeah. didn't. She didn't wrestle with nobody. She, yeah. yeah. She didn't spit I mean, in nobody's face. She didn't do anything. She just got shot. I mean, it's not. It's one of those cases. There's no record. There's. It's yeah, a, but that kind of stuff has happened before. There's lots of people that have been shot and didn't wrestle with anyone or or anything like that. I mean, it, she did. She did something wrong. She came down and was moving towards them. And something that's, that's something wrong. happened. Yeah, and and yeah. I mean, how is it, that wrong? It's, how is that it's, wrong? it's also it's also wrong to like reach for your wallet or, 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 or other things, right? Was, I thought she was in her pajamas. 
Yeah, maybe that's, you know. Some PJs could still have a gun. Pretty threatening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, I'm just, I'm yeah, just they, playing. They, I'm, the pajamas had skulls on them, if you didn't know that. Like, they, she was she, she was ready to go. <laughs> death, yeah. metal, death metal jammies. That's what they were, yeah. That's right. Oh, is that is that serious? Is that No, no, no. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Listen, I'm just wondering, like, are we are we extremely are we <laughs> concerned here because she's Australian and blonde? Nope. At, nope. Or no. yeah, don't care if yeah, she's yeah, black. It's because someone in a position of authority killed someone. Yeah, that's not, not the same. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but there's nothing. Like, if if that's if that's why we're concerned, there's nothing wrong with that. Or are we also? I mean, is this are like we, a perfect storm? I are, thing going on here because the cop are, is Somali and and Muslim and all that kind of stuff. Are we are we putting people in positions that? Should not be in those positions because, because of their identity, whatever reasons. But you're doing it anyways. You know, okay. like that. You know, you 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 put people in positions of authority because they're a female or or because, but they're not the most qualified individual qualified to be in that position. Yeah, but I think we've had this argument before. I mean, I think the last time we were talking back when we were talking about uh, Philando Castile, I was bringing up that same thing that there's lots of people that are, you know, for the most part, I still believe police officers, good guys, you know, they're out there trying to do something that we I can't require do. them to do. But yeah, there's, there's, um, in lots of cases, there's um, not just a few cases at this point, there's lots of people who should not be out there for a bunch of different reasons, right? right Some right. affirmative well, action or that's not, okay, yeah. we, we need to get women out there, or maybe we need to get, um, you know, we need to get more, uh, Muslim police officers or what, whatever, whatever it is, there's lots of different things. There's lots of people that shouldn't be doing this job that are doing it, right? Well, that, that needs to change. Okay. Yeah, I'm just wondering if you just came to that conclusion over this no, particular incident no, or you've no. been, you've been getting there. No, were. but this one's just super it's strange. Pretty blatant. Yeah, I mean, so. it's just, okay. yeah. you just don't right. do this. How, how many times does this happen? <laughs> right across your no it's it's it has but it's so much crazy what i here's what i'm trying to say there's a lot of craziness going well, on not, i i know but you can yeah but yeah. it's like it's almost like every single time it's ramping up right like what what else are we going to see at this point before before we go you know what we've got to really sit down have a serious conversation and seriously start like training these people actually vetting them in the first place before they become police officers and making sure that they have the right level of intelligence and temperament and you know a whole bunch of different things down the line those are just some of the things i'm thinking about that they're properly trained on firearms that they're even into guns that right i, I i've said that before these guys enough, aren't even into guns huh it's funny enough i've run into a lot of cops that don't are not at one or not into guns but don't seem confident in their firearms either like uh, which is weird to me because if, if I were a cop, I feel like, you know, I'd want to be, you know, well-trained in my, my firearm. That's your life or death right there. But there are a lot of them that are just, it's just a tool and they don't really think about it. They don't, it's not, it's not like, it's not like one of us, you know, having a gun. Yeah. There you go being logical again. I totally agree with you, but <laughs> for some reason, I mean, this, that's happening. Seriously, that's happening. I think they always, come across. they always bring up the excuse. There's not enough money and there's not enough this and there's not enough that, but there's plenty of money to teach them how to be politically correct. Mm. Yeah. They all, I, they all gotta go to all these classes on how to, how to talk to people and how, what not to say and, and how to tippy toe around everybody. And yeah, I, I don't agree with the not enough money. So who here lives in like a small, we know, Babyface, you live in kind of like a, well, are we going to consider Gainesville a big town? Wait a second. Gainesville's not a small town. It's not that big yeah. town. It, it's, it's big, right? Because it has the university and then a whole bunch of other police departments, right? When the when the college kids are gone, though, there's, it's pretty small. Okay. That, but there's a, there's a lot of police departments in Gainesville. I think we've got like uh, University of we Florida. Have the, the Sheriff's Office for Alachua County, and we have the, the city police. Yeah, you have Gainesville, Alachua County Sheriff's Office. You also have University of Florida Police Department. You also have Santa yeah, Fe College. You have Santa Fe College. Isn't the Department of Agriculture there too? Something like that. They have their own popo. Yeah, we have the we have one of their buildings here somewhere. I don't know what they yeah. what they actually. Yeah have there but yeah we have them here. yeah so you're not so gainesville is not a small town <laughs> no. no we got four or five pds i yeah. guess here so so anyone so who's from a small town what about you guys walter small town mm, no 
They're in St. Pete. No. <laughs> Santa um, Barbara, yeah. We're, just, we're in a megalopolis, so there's okay. Yeah. Kevin, there's, are you in a small town? No, no, I'm in St. Louis. It's, it's yeah, big town, right? City, but a big town. That's what we say. Small yeah. town. The reason why I'm asking is I live in a I live in a small town. I don't know. I think my entire police department is maybe ten or twelve dudes. Oh, wow. that, is there a separate police department and the sheriff there? Uh, no, it's just uh, the it's sheriff's the sheriff. department. I guess like. Um, uh, ASO goes through there sometimes, and the state troopers. That's about patrol, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but my my police, my local sheriff's department is a small department, and they're able to run perfectly fine. You know, we don't have high taxes and all that kind of stuff. So I don't really buy the argument. I mean, maybe we can reduce the. You know, we can save some money by reducing the police department the size, and then get people better training and all those kinds of things. Vet people better. Make sure that's they have a good happen. temperament. Yeah, <laughs> I hate to say that it's not going to happen. It's, but it's yeah. almost it's almost better at this point. That, so I mean, what's the solution? Just hire more guys. You got to get you got to get the PC people out of the police out of yeah. the out of that out of the training and yeah, that, that, that whole thing of lawyers. political correctness needs to go, come out of law enforcement because it, it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, yeah it's, not, <laughs> it's not serving any of us. I think we should get people that want to do the job. Um. You know, and then test their uh, intelligence, temperament, uh, all why, of those kinds of things. Why do you Why do you want to be a, a a cop? Why do you want to be a cop? Is it a job? Yeah. You need benefits. You know, that's not that's not the reason to get a job anywhere. It's just for benefits. Sorry, not my opinion. Yeah, it should be that they somehow want to serve their community. I mean, at, at least part. I mean, look, we all have to make money, right? Well, somehow. We all, yeah, we all need some kind of benefits. I mean, that's the exchange that we're doing. We invented this imaginary thing called money. Well, so. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, do you have any, I, you probably have some opinions on this, I'm sure. Hit us with it. Yeah, I mean, from, you know, working at a police department for close to a decade, um, I remember where the job, even get a job as a cop was more of a, at first of all, it used to be very difficult to do. Like, I mean, you to get a job as a cop, you almost had to have an inside connection, right? It was, it was really, really tough to do. Nowadays, with the way people look at police, you can't keep enough of those positions filled. So like any other market, you just got to pretty much take the best of what you're getting. Um, I know in St. Louis City here, uh, we are um, in this. Well, I'm not in the city, but I'm around the corner from the city. The city is very, very short of officers. The surrounding counties pay on average about $12,000 more a year to go literally five minutes across the line. <laughs> you might as well. They don't want to work in the city. The St. Louis uh, County, which we have city and county. Our county, I want to say, we have well over 100 different municipalities within 15 or 20 minute drive. I mean, we got police departments everywhere. But a lot of those counties, uh, they just passed uh, Proposition P, uh, which they did a half cent sales tax hike here. So it allowed St. Louis County, which is much bigger than St. Louis City, to put two patrol officers in every vehicle give them even more money on top of the fact they were already making more than the city and equip them with better training and better equipment. So a lot of guys were running out to the county like, hey, I can make more money. I get all the cool toys. I get a partner guaranteed with me in the car. I'm going. Uh, probably, yeah. probably less hassle too. Yeah, uh, yeah, in some parts. And in the city, you're looking at, um, uh, we don't have enough cops to fill the quota. We're kind of taking who's ever going to come in the door that looks like they can drive a car and use a turn signal. And let's go. Yeah. I mean, I see lots of people saying that, that, that um, their cities are having, I see that in the chat, that they're having a hard time retaining police. How about instead of hiring new guys, pay the guys who are there that are qualified and good guys have been, you know, been doing that thing and doing a good job. How about pay them more, train them better? But then who's going to be on the streets? And you need, for a city, man, you need a, you need some. Well, I think if, if you let, if you let the people, if you start with letting the people defend themselves, mm -hmm. That's going to help. <laughs> oh, well, well, I guarantee you, you that. You, you if, just you let the, if you let the good, honest people, the hardworking people of those cities defend themselves more easily, it's going to start there, right? You're, you're going to have to bring Sodom Stargate over here to that to happen. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you had to bring that back up. <laughs> because, because you ain't going to get those leftists in those towns to let go of that authority. They ain't going to do it. We just had a new uh, election here where we just got a new mayor in. And, you know, if you understand Missouri state law, you understand what I'm about to say to her is complete, uh, say about her is complete BS because she couldn't do it. But she ran on her ticket. And I think this pushed her over the edge and she won on her ticket that if you were within city limits with an AR-15, you will be arrested, period. 
What? What? That's bullshit. You can't do that. That's insanity. In Missouri? And she's like, yes, and that's what she did to make people feel safer in the city. So a lot of people, that was one of the things that helped push her over the hump and got her elected. Oh, we don't. That's insanity. So right. Yeah, and so St. Louis City is pretty rough, man. It's pretty rough. It's 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 a treat. But yeah, she ran on it. So literally having one in possession, even driving through on your way to the range or whatever, she's promising her constituents that those people will be arrested. It is illegal. And I'm like, no, it's not. You, oh, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. But they run on it and they win. Oh, well. Well, see, then that then the people are getting what they asked for. You know, I think it yeah. starts with the people in, in this world. You cannot get something unless you start by asking for it. That doesn't mean you're going to get it, but you start by saying this is what we want, you know. And um, I think that's the thing that if those guys are asking for that in that place, then that's what they're going to get. And they're going to get more chaos. Hasn't done anything in Chicago. I think that's one of the things in the news Lola was pointing this out, but I did read about it. Like, uh, because of violence going up in Chicago, there's more women getting into guns legally and training and all that stuff. Have you guys seen that? Uh, yeah, I just did. Um, I just did a post on Facebook where I drove two hours outside the city to do a, a class for some ladies called Armed and Fabulous. They drove from, I think, some of those girls drove from two and a half hours away just to come to this class. So I think women and women across the board, I think are really getting more into it and they're starting to take their own personal protection more to heart. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, and I think that that's a first step, right? Because when they realize that what I said, that they have to defend themselves and then they go out there and figure out how do they do this legally, then they start finding out, wait, some people, you know, you're, you're telling me an AR-15, <laughs> I could do a much better job with that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. but I can't have it because this person says I can't have it. Then they start looking into the laws, right? And going like, well, why can't I have this thing? You know, and I think that's where it starts. So it's, it's a good thing. I, as long as it's coming to me, as long as it's coming from a good, from a positive place, obviously the gun violence itself is not a positive thing, but if they're looking at it in a positive way, then I'm all for that, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting time. Uh, but yeah. and when, actually, you know, one thing I found out, you think is you think is sometimes people think, oh, getting a woman in the handguns is one thing. I'm going to tell you what the shocker to people is that every time a woman comes into a class, if it's a women event, they come in. We always tease them with ARs. ARs aren't the focus. We'll tease them toward the end. <laughs> the AR is the favorite thing. They love it. Like every time they shoot it, they're like, how can I get one of those? I don't want a handgun anymore. <laughs> so yeah. Like, you know, I, uh, how, how my girlfriend, my girlfriend, I take her. I take her to shoot pistols and she absolutely hates it. Like uh, totally hates it. Yeah. Um, and I put the, I put the SBR crank in her hand or the, or my SBR to AR 15. And she's like, this is fun. I could do this all day. I'm like, yeah, right. it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Cause I think the thing, the thing here that we need to realize, and you know, I mean, this is me saying it, it's not the rest of you guys, but I think a lot of the freedom that we're losing in America is due to women. That's my personal belief, you know, and uh, obviously we all can vote. Right. And women are voting. And a lot of times women vote women. It's easier for women to vote to give up freedom if they don't understand what they're giving up. And that's the point that I'm making. I think the more that women understand what it is that they're giving up when they vote against freedom, when they vote for gun control, then I think the more they understand that, the more they'll they'll turn around and because because that's what's really happening. That's who's putting a lot of people into office right now. Well, they're generally you know? more susceptible to the uh, the sob stories. So they yeah. have one good one, then they're all impassioned about it. Yeah, as it. as guys, we realize that in order to defend ourselves, protect ourselves and our families, that there's good. You know, there may have to be some kind of violence involved, and we want the uh, best tools that we can use if people decide to bring violence to our doorsteps back against them. And I think in a lot of cases, um, it's it's easy for for women to see that in a completely different way until they until they get into this and they understand it, and then they go, okay, I get this, right? So. You know, we're fighting for the for the hearts and minds, I think, of women as well as lots of other people. Right. When there's more um, minorities, for example, getting into guns, then that also makes that also makes the whole situation better. And, and um, like talking as a black guy, a lot of black people vote against um, their own their own uh, their own selves. 
There's things that we really believe in our heart of hearts, but when we go to vote, most of the time, we just vote for people who we think, oh, this guy's a Democrat, so he's on my side. This guy's a Republican, so he hates me, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And we have to get away from that. And you, and one of the ways that you can get away from this stuff is when you really start to like boil this down to freedom, when you realize like, wait, I can't have this thing because someone out there said that I can, but this is the best tool for me to defend myself. Right? Does that make sense to anyone? Or am I just talking craziness? No, it totally makes sense. It makes sense. It, it, you know, I, I like to say, you know, a point that I always uh, tell people, and I don't, I don't like to go argue a person's politics, but I will tell them this: most, not all, but majority of minority people in general uh, are born. You're born democratic. You just are. You, you know, when you when you're born, you're like, good guys, bad guys, done deal. Period. And and that's what you're exposed to. So it's like. These guys don't want you to succeed. They're all about, um, you know, capitalism and but making sure they shut you down and keep all the money for themselves. And they don't like blacks. And you're, you're going to fail if you go on their side. Or we're going to call you a bunch of names if we think you're on their side. Stick with these guys over here in the blue. And even though your neighborhood looks like a piece of crap, trust me, they have. <laughs> <laughs> Who's, you know, it's yeah, funny. It's, but, it's, you know, it sounds crazy, but people really do believe that. Yeah. You, you you brought up a good subject. People calling people names. Soon as soon as the black guy decides he's going to be a businessman and and move out of the hood and change his life, he all of a sudden he's like uncle. Is it Uncle Tom in the yeah. term, or he's like yeah. uh, you know he's like the he's like the enemy. What's up with that? Bucket of crap. Because yeah. you them all down. You, you can't. It's it's you know. Once people, you try to make it make it better for yourself, now you're supposed you, now you're not bringing up your brothers with you. Well, it's like. You, you gotta like bring yourself down, up yeah. first before I can bring somebody else up. I mean, it's like, well, it's it's like Hank. You had um uh, the Reverend Ken, Ken Blanchard on the other day. Yes. Um, and I I listened to that. I, I caught it the next day, and I was uh driving. I just put it in my my ear, and I was listening to it. And I think he brought up a lot of good points. But you know, when even when you look at the gun guys, right? Because if all the if we're gonna segment it to race, if all the minority gun guys went out and started educating the community, because sometimes. People will take information from somebody they feel they can relate to. It's just it's just the way yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Commercials advertise a certain way. And, you know, Lexus never does a commercial uh, unless it's a bunch of rich houses or big businesses around it. They appeal to a certain <laughs> Yeah, they don't. You never see a Lexus commercial in the hood. Why is that? Right. You know, <laughs> it's um, they're appealing to it. And I wish that we had a better, you know, a better sense of self. In a way to say that, look, guys. Um, yes, there's always there's there there is disparity in this country. There are people all over the world that don't get treated fairly, and I'm not going to sit here and be blind and say that people aren't being mistreated. That is a falsehood. People are being mistreated. However, right. when you start dealing with the overall picture of what we're trying to do, even segmenting it down to having gun rights, what I posed the question, I put a poll out there on Facebook. I asked the question. I said, look, if you wanted to control or dominate a people. Would you choose option A or B? A. No, he's just trolling it. A would be. Would you tell them to train with guns, fight with guns, be uh, aware of your constitutional rights, and we're going to give you six months to a year to do that, and then we're going to announce that we're going to fight you. So you got six months. We're going to give you all the information, all the tools, and all the training because we want to have a fair fight. All right. <laughs> or it's would you? Be or or option B? Would you befriend them? Tell them everything you're saying for them is for their well-being. Tell them everybody else is speaking against what you're saying is their true enemy. Give them things. Make them feel comfortable. Make them feel like you're their ally. And I told people, before you answer the question, think about what happened to the Indians when they saw boats arriving on the shore. Yeah. How yeah, did that if, if you're gonna take a if you're gonna take a lamb to the slaughter, you don't want it in panic mode, right? That doesn't make the meat taste so good. No. So it, it, yeah. it, it's sad because I know you and uh, the Reverend uh, Ken Hank talked about a lot of the, the gun groups out there now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been I, my name got dragged through the mud a little bit, which I didn't care. I needed a shower anyway. But it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was <laughs> that's a good one. You know, they, they, they started with the with the name calling. And it's like, like, excuse me, on the on the board here in this podcast, you see anti-violence event that's done in the middle of the hood. So what do you mean I'm not helping people? But every time you're not playing against somebody's agenda, if they're not the puppet master, they're jealous about who they feel the puppet master is. So it's not an issue of not liking what you're doing. It's the issue of the fact that you have a voice and I can't control it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think we all have the right to uh, do the things that we want to do as long as we're not being destructive to other people. So if if they don't like what we're doing, that's fine. But, you know, to attack, which they also have the right to attack people and bring them down. I get that as well. But, you know, the the idea of attacking and, and bringing everyone else down that's out there doing something because they're not doing it your way. <clears throat> is is um is terrible you know i don't think that's the way to, to go about this whole thing right you know if they're if they're not out there saying the the white man's a devil he's trying to kill you he's coming to get you <laughs> then you're like okay well they're they're wrong they're uncle toms as um as walter was referring to earlier because they're not saying this right, and right. the truth of the matter is is that um i know there's people out there who do bad things and they're white I know there's people out there who do bad things and they're black and there's people of all different races and creeds that do that do bad things. But the majority of us as human beings, we just want to live on the planet peacefully. We want to go about our business. We want to take care of our families and, you know, and and um, move ourselves forward. If, if we really all just hated each other like that, can you this would be hell on earth that we would be living in. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not. So that's the thing. I, I think that the, I think what it comes down to, and it's what uh, Reverend Ken was talking about, is that nowadays we're just living in a world where in order to get attention on social media and, and the other platforms that are out there, you just have to make a lot of that kind of noise and, and try to bring other people down. So yeah, that's how it goes. That's how yeah. it goes. Yeah. So. All right. So uh, you know what? Here, let's switch. The subject a little yes. bit here. Yes, switch gears, yeah. Yeah. Did you guys see this? Um, this is uh, okay. I'm reading this one from uh, USA Today, but you guys can look it up. Wisconsin company to install rice sized microchips in employees. Have you guys heard about this? I did not hear about that. Yeah, briefly. No, this yeah. sounds ridiculous, though. Yeah, it says, Welcome to the future, question mark. A Wisconsin technology company is offering its employees microchip implants. Offering. That yeah, that can be used to scan into the building and purchase food at work. Whether or not to get a chip is up to the employee to decide. Um, I think it's called Three Square Market, a company that provides technology for break room or micro market. I'm mm -hmm. not sure what a break room is. Um, has over 50 employees who plan to have the devices implanted. The tiny chip, which uses RFID technology or radio frequency identification, can be implanted between the thumb and forefinger within seconds. <laughs> Just like a no, dog. Thanks. Just like yeah. a dog. No, so uh, who's who's gonna do this? Babyface, <laughs> you're you're a technology so, so, guy. Yeah, I guess I I'm the. I don't know if I'm the only one that works for like a tech company, but this is this is my wallet, and in the back is uh, a chip. Is my ID to buzz into the to the office right. to like let ourselves in. Right. I don't need a microchip in my hand. This is tiny enough as is. Like, would I want that? Yeah, I mean, we already we already have this stuff have in a, a lot of places. Like, tracked or anything? Like, I don't I don't have fear of my company tracking me because they can go and look like when I buzzed in, when I buzzed out. We have cameras that take a picture of the door when you buzz in, stuff like that. It's, and you can leave that. Like, you can leave that at home. Yeah. And you, don't, you don't have to have that chip in your in your yeah, hand exactly. the whole time. When I quit the company, I just take this out and give it back to the office manager. I don't need yeah. it. Like, Are they going to move from my hand? Extract the chip? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things. So um, they didn't mention what level of pain you go through. <laughs> to have, I guarantee you it's not painless. It's probably a thick gauge needle. That yeah, something's going boom into your bloodstream. Well, All kinds your, of things can go wrong there. Dog. All ask, kinds of stuff. Ask your dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. I guess. Same technology. Yeah. Dogs have a much Same higher pain tolerance than we do. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm scared of what happens when you get fired. I don't get the chip back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to need to big, collect that back from you, please. Big vacuum. Yeah. I well, think that's a finger uh, at the same time. <laughs> well, what's what's crazy is they already have 50 employees that are going to do it. Um, I don't know if they gave them incentives or these employees are just trying to be on their good side, not get fired. Who knows? They get a What's free hamburger, on? a free hamburger every month. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But why that do you need totally to? Worth it. <laughs> why do you need to, to? Why do you need to embed this thing in someone when there's just so like you know, as Babyface is saying, if you want something that's convenient, give them some kind of wristband or something. I mean, 
Oh, come on. Yeah. Stop stop being so negative. Come on. It's Get with the flow. It's, it's technology. No, I'm not, I'm not letting anyone chip me, man. That's not happening. Uh, <laughs> they, what they should be chipping is these damn illegal aliens. That's what they should be chipping. Uh, well, no. I don't even agree with it in that case, man. Yeah, I don't that, believe in human beings being chipped. Well, you know, okay? after, you, after you It's not good for any human beings. Because, listen, if you, if you think, if you say that it's okay for them to do it with illegal aliens, yeah. then they'll be like, you know what? If we arrest you for whatever, you know, chip, you, you ran a stop arm. sign. Yeah. Okay, if we, if okay. we arrest you, we're gonna ch we're gonna chip your ass. We're gonna put one of these things in you. No. Uh, you could use your guns to shoot you, so we could track you to make sure you don't do that. And we. Yeah. Uh, this gonna, I'm, not, I'm not agreeing with that. Gun yeah. Okay. Well, I saw somebody get chip was in Suicide Squad, and that didn't work out. Too well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> Yeah, and we know there's a bunch of other things. You know, it's just like when they were talking uh, when we had the conversation with uh, uh, the police officers that were running plates butt and stuff kissers. like that. <laughs> the range well, says they're well, butt, they're butt kissers. Every company every company has them. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, this is like the conversation that we were having about um, license plates being automatically scanned. Because once we yeah. get to this level, then police officers would just be sitting there scanning everyone walking by. Oh, hold on a second. We got to talk to you. You're, you know, when we scanned you, your chip came, your thing came uh, up a little messed up. <laughs> yeah, I got a parking ticket or two. Come on, fella. <laughs> Do you guys in Florida have the cop cars with the with the auto scanners? I believe in some. I don't actually know. Well, obviously we do have in Orlando because like, that's what they were doing, right? No, I don't think it was auto scanning in Orlando. They were just randomly manually scanning. Okay. Well, here in Missouri, we, a lot of our uh, police cars are equipped with four auto scanners. So literally, it's two in the front, two in the back, and as they drive down the street, it runs every <laughs> That's insane. That's that's crazy to me. I'm not alright with that. No, that's, and but that's the reason why we're moving. We're moving in this direction, man. Were well, they going to convince? No, it's this is going to make it way better for you. You know what? You want your welfare? Boom! We're going to put a. We're going to put this uh, microchip in. Need a chip, right? Yeah. yeah. You go to the doctor. You know what? We're just. We're going to chip you. It's going to be easier for us to get your medical info. Yeah. We're just going to keep coming up with reasons to chip our asses. Yeah. So no, I'm against that. What else you got? No. So, sorry. All right. Well, I, I guess I guess Walter has had enough of this. You want to talk about Stargate, Walter? Sure. Yeah. Let's talk about. Let's talk, talk about, about the. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I just saw an article, and I don't know where we saw it at. They're working on technology for, um, and this is for real, uh, uh, time travel, basically. <laughs> okay, you're you're on a sci-fi kick today. I don't know. Well, I mean, let's talk real sci-fi, not some goofy story with some guy that androgynous and everything else. You know, I mean, you okay, don't have to so you have, have, you have, you have, have sci-fi to have androgynous. It's out there. Okay. Do you want me to tell you real time travel? We've been time traveling since we started this show. Okay, well, where are we ended up at? <laughs> no, I'm just saying we're traveling through time. Okay, yeah. tell us tell us about the time travel well, thing. Was, well, have you ever heard this? The ideas behind time travel, what you'd have to do, and you have to go. You have to become Superman and be fast. No, you have to go to faster than the speed. Of, you have to go faster than the speed of light. Okay. So they don't think you can withstand going faster than the speed of light, or can you? I don't know. So there's people working on that idea actively. So they're making us capable of withstanding going faster than the speed of light. Well, you got to have a, a a vehicle to go faster than the speed, or a oh. mode to go faster than the speed of light. Oh, okay. It's right. like it's like teleporting. The same thing where you break your molecules down and put them in the wire. But yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't want to do that because then the government would have your wire, your your stuff. So no, yeah, I don't want to do that either, man. Uh, you know, I'm not letting them get nothing on me. But it's the same idea. <laughs> Some of the same principle, you know. So you know what's funny? We were talking about the chips. I don't know if you guys remember on one of these hangouts, my buddy Mark. Remember, Mark came on and he said he wanted to be chipped. Did anyone see that? Does really? anyone remember that? Yes. No. What? Well, but you you know how Mark is. He just says that to get you riled up. So No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, he, he, said he wants to go Remember he said he wants to go cyborg first, uh, all that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> so I well, hold on a second. I can't remember if he said he wanted to be chipped or go cyborg. It was one of those. So which was weird. It was weird to me because Mark's always against that kind of stuff, so. Yeah. Um no. Yeah, do you really want to do time travel? If if you could, would you? No, I don't. I don't, think it, I don't think it's a good idea. So, it opened yeah. up a can of worms you don't necessarily want to open up. So. Yeah, because I could tell you, if there's time travel and and they let me do it, the world is fucked. 
<laughs> I'm messing everything up. <laughs> You know, because I mean, one little thing you do messing around with time, I'm just going to mess every damn thing up, you know. So I don't know. I, yeah, we'll see. Well, I don't know what you guys think, but uh, there's certain, you know, it's like everyone says they want to live forever. Do you, would you, do you want to live forever? Hell no. Not if, Walter. And, and not look like a, I, all your loved ones, your friends and loved ones die off. Everybody dies that. off. Yeah. It kind of depends yeah. on the no, at the end, too. Yeah. Well, even if, okay, let's say everyone could live forever. Do you want everyone? Everybody forever? can't live forever. <laughs> Come on, it would get really crowded really quick. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's all these things that seem so cool when you watch it in sci-fi movies, but eh. yeah. We'll if you think too, if you're a thinker, sci-fi gets boring after a while. So. Yeah, the world's fun a lot of ways that it is right now. Um, so okay, so someone made this comment. So let me um, let me. Lola is like you know bringing this to my attention. Someone said companies already monitor employees. It's called social media. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of people yeah. just chirp their whole lives yeah. out there. No need yeah. to other than. Yeah, I'll, and I don't think people realize that nowadays when they go for a job yeah, that one of the first things that happens is they search Facebook. They, they Facebook yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, well, I mean, I, I saw it uh, myself kind of in some of the family members when they were in college, they were every other day. There was pictures of them drinking and done and done the party and everything else. It's like, don't you realize that somebody's going to look at that? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Not somebody want to look at. It. I think younger people don't get it. I think um, well, some some of them do. <clears throat> There's some people that are smart enough not to do anything. <laughs> Babyface, you have to drag him to post anything on social media. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> and he's the tech guy. He's like, nope. I'm not gonna do it. It's because I know. It's because yeah. I work in it. <laughs> yeah. So I it's think the enough. The only thing I can say is, if anybody like really tried to find me, I'm I'm prolific enough on the internet that it wouldn't be hard. But I don't want to make it any easier for people. <laughs> like, screw that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can find anything on anybody if you work at it hard enough. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah there's this. There's this site called um, TruePeopleSearch.com. I don't know if you guys have uh, heard of that. Uh-uh. Not that. Is that something to like stalk your ex-girlfriend with or pretty much, yeah. It's called and it's free too. And you know, it's not like free sign up with a subscription. It's called truepeoplesearch.com. If you go to that site, plug your name in, you'll be surprised. It'll say everybody you know, uh, people that you probably are associated with, all your former addresses, all the phone numbers you use, uh, your mom, your dad's name. It's it's a trip. And it's really free. There's not like some kind of gimmick to it. No, nope, no sign up, no trial. It's period. not getting your info right now while you're doing it. That's what it's doing. Yeah, it's pulling your cookies from your computer. It's, I yeah. went, I went I don't and you watch. I went, there is a, a way to remove it. You can request that the site remove you. So I just went and had myself pulled down. I had my wife pulled down. A couple coworkers. But yeah, it's it's a it's it's invasive to say the least. Yeah. Have you guys seen? Uh, have you guys seen? Please rob me. Dot com. Please. It, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's called Please Rob Me. It, it's a, a guy wrote basically wrote a script that whenever somebody checks in on Facebook or Twitter, it looks to see if their Facebook or Twitter account is public and if they've posted their address. Basically posts on there saying, this person checked in at the bar down the street. They're not home. Here's their address. Go rob them. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm just... You can't, you don't want to have all this info on the internet. Yeah, that's a good criminal database right there. Yeah, like when people go on vacation and they post the fact that, oh, I'm in Mexico. And I'm, uh, yeah, God, yeah, nobody's watching my house right now. It's totally empty. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but people do it. Yeah, um, I know. Did you guys? Um, did you guys see this? We were talking about. Uh, well, I think Walter was talking about illegal aliens. Did you guys see where uh, someone left? Um, some uh, someone was moving or doing human trafficking, and they left the people in the tractor trailer. Did you guys see that? In the Walmart what? parking lot. Yeah, Austin, in Austin, Texas, yeah. or something like that, or yeah, someplace down there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they had um, they had a few of them. I think they got <sighs> somebody got thirsty and asked for something to drink. Yeah, that's horrible, man. It was a whole tractor trailer what? full. Eight of people them. were found. So, Eight uh, people so were found dead. Yeah. And 30 others yeah. inside in a brutally hot semi trailer parked in yeah, a Why not why not just let the people go? Why not just open it up like if you're, you know, I don't know. Kill, kill them first before he lets them all out. Yeah. Yeah. The trafficker that is. Kill him probably. 
Yeah. He doesn't um, care about the people. He's just moving them. Yeah. I don't know, know that there's people in there. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> we've, we've, I don't know. If, have we had the death penalty discussion here? I think we've skirted it a little bit. But, uh, well, this, you know, my, you know, my feelings about it. Uh, <laughs> this is a good death penalty. Where is this? Was this Texas that this guy did this? Yeah. yeah. I actually, one of the, one of the persons that got caught is actually from Clearwater, I believe I heard. F yeah. Florida. Oh, uh, yeah. I think the, was it the guy that left the trailer? I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, definitely to me, this is a death penalty thing right here. Well, I'm concerned because he could have just opened it. If, if, you know, he could have just opened it and let these guys go and let them do whatever. I mean, you know, we're not, I, I'm sure that those of us here are not necessarily for um, illegal aliens and stuff like that, but that doesn't mean that people should die, you know? Well, no, hell no. So, but you got to also take in consideration what, uh, well, these people hire these people to do this stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it doesn't justify it by any means, but I'm saying you got to think twice about hiring some guy and he locks you in the back of a tractor trailer. You got to start thinking. Bad yeah, I understand that. I think what happens is that people are very desperate, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, I understand it from a point of view. At one time, I guess I would have been considered uh, myself and my family would have been considered illegal aliens. But we didn't like uh, sneak over the border or anything like that. We just came here with a visa and then refused to leave. <laughs> we, came, we came through JFK like, you know. I'm out of here. And then, yeah, it was just like, yeah, we're staying in Brooklyn. <laughs> for Rockaway. But. <laughs> you know, um, listen, if, you know, I know you guys, I don't know if everyone here has been to other places outside of America, but there's people out there that get really desperate and that's how they wind up in these situations. I'm not saying I agree with it, but this is, you know, this is what I always tell people that America is like this uh, beautiful paradise to people that are outside of America. And there's some people in some countries that don't have to do this kind of stuff. And then some people that feel this desperate. And so they do these things. And that doesn't mean that they deserve to die. They're still human beings. And it's still a horrible thing to do to human beings. You wouldn't like it if they did it to dogs or cats. Yeah, well, well, that, that, you know, the sad part is people get more upset about it. What, yeah. if they did it to... They, they, you know, we just had a manatee die down here. That was 16 year, 69 year old manatee. Mm -hmm. you know, it was bad. Okay. But I've never seen such a outpouring of, of oh my God, the manatee died. Yeah. Nobody well, gets nobody gets upset about the sixteen year old sixty nine year old man that gets hit by a car. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like the same thing with abortion, right? I mean, people care more about yeah. the baby seals than the baby humans yeah. that we're killing all the time. The hell with the humans, right? We got plenty yeah. of them. So I'm sure that's like another hot button subject. <laughs> yeah. You know. That you know, no one out there wants to talk about, but it's you know. Yeah, we're not. We don't care about. Uh, well, they don't care about either one. They don't care about people in Chicago or the babies. So, you know. Oh yeah, well. yeah. Um, I do care about human beings. I think um, you know, I, I care about more than human beings. But this is a horrible thing, and I think definitely it's the kind of thing that if they I'm prove get, that get. people did this, um, you know, death penalty. My personal opinion. Oh yeah. Well, uh, real quick too. Not not draw it out for years or nothing. So. Nope. No, I mean, if, if th this guy, if they can prove that this guy knew there were human beings in there, right, which he did, if he got scared, um, yeah. so you know, he knew there were human beings in there and locked them up and walked away in the summertime. Well, that's the question. Did he know that there were humans in there? Well, he, somebody he was just, driving the truck. Across well, why the was he scared? He was, I, I thought the <laughs> article said he was scared. Uh, you, anyone listening out there can go look this up. But it looked like, um, from what I've seen of news reports, he said he was scared because he knew he was smuggling. He was smuggling well, people. Well, okay. and you just stop the thing and open the door and walk away from it. Yeah, and, that's what I'm saying. Let the, and and know, don't, let go off, don't go off like ants in every direction you can think of. I mean, it's not. <laughs> they're not yeah, going to. They can do whatever they want to do, but don't. They're not going to. They're people not going to. There. Once they get in the, across the border, they're not going to report him. <laughs> they're out of there. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a horrible thing. You know, don't do to other human beings things you don't want done to you well, or people that you care about. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a horrible thing, man. It's a horrible, it's, it's, you know, human beings, we're just so horrible to each other. It's not even funny. Yeah. Yeah. Always, always, so. always have been and always will. It's not, not yeah. that's not going to change. Yeah. So, Unfortunately. you know, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess I figured we'll uh, like segue into that since uh, someone, Walter, 
What? Who's talking? Who's oh, about, talking about? about the manatee or? Well, no, you were talking about chipping someone. So no, you know. I didn't say that. <laughs> that that's not. No, I was saying about hanging people. I mean. Oh, well, you know, what you were talking about hanging people? I missed no, I mean, that. It's it's. I was I was bringing it up because it's like it's it, the tree hugger should like it because it's recyclable. So, <laughs> he usually brings it up when people complain. Look at about how the death you, get, costs. you can use the rope over and over. It's natural. Yeah. You know, come on. You fertilize the tree. You bury him right next to it. It's well, that well, that too. You know, I, but <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, but I mean, as far as as yeah. far as, as far as capital, you, are you sure you don't want to talk about the crying game? <laughs> no, I, no, no. <laughs> uh, I'm, look, I'm looking through. I'm looking through the news here to, to see what's uh, what's going on in the news. We all missed out on this thing because it happened over the weekend. Um, I guess Sean Spicer is out. Oh yeah. And we yeah, have yeah. Scaramucci. Did we talk? I think we talked about this a little bit on my last. Something, time. something about Spicer taking off of the refrigerator. What's up with that? A what? A mini fridge. He took off with a mini fridge. Is oh, that the news right now? Is it Russian? <laughs> <laughs> was yeah. it a Russian mini fridge? I don't know. They don't make mini fridges in Russia. <laughs> no, it's they haven't nice figured box. that out yet. Nice chest, old school ice chest. <laughs> they make yeah, mini. It's Russia. It's Russia. <laughs> they make mini nukes. They don't make mini fridges. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I get like it. Non okay. Yeah. So I think the thing the thing that happened is that um, the uh, what's his name? Is it Scaramucci? Yeah. yeah. Scaramucci. Yeah. Yeah. It's a new guy. Yeah. He's anti. He's an anti-gun guy. I think we were talk. I was talking about this on Friday with uh, Reverend Ken Blanchard. So, um, yeah. So there's there's lots of he's put out lots of anti-gun stuff. Although I think they were out there trying to delete some of those uh, tweets and other social media posts that he did that was anti-gun. What do you guys think about that? Does it matter to you? He's no. He's anti-gun. Hell yeah, it matters. Yeah. Oh, it matters, but I mean, it's. I, mean, it, I yeah. don't know. I'm not going to get upset about it at this point. Yeah. Is he? he well, this is the anti -gun. new guy that's uh, what press corps in charge of the press corps. Yeah. yeah. The director in charge. Yeah, of the I don't think he's going to. He's communications director of the White House now. Don't I guess. care. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of care less actually because yeah. he has, hopefully, he has very little to do with the. Uh, politics that are going on, and more to do with yeah. just speaking of what. He's a mouth messaging. He's a mouth. Yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. He's a spin doctor. That's exactly what he is. Yeah. Right, 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 yeah, right. Absolutely. You know who I see in the back in the uh, in the chat room? Who's that? American Gun Chick. Isn't oh it? yes, I did see her back there. Yes. Yeah. Let's so shout out to American Gun Chick. I did say hello on the. Yeah, I think. Uh, let me see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, she says that um, there's a video coming out with Safety Harbor tomorrow. Oh, excellent! So an American gun check. So you excellent. Can check that out. You know, yeah. love to, I would love to have American gun check come on this show and hang oh, out with us. Yeah, we could do that. That's Wouldn't cool. that be cool? Like we yeah. haven't, had, and you know, we've obviously we've had Lola on, but we haven't actually had Lola sitting here with us. Yeah, it's all been like yeah. a dude. It's been a dude thing so far. Yeah, big sausage fest, which you know, <laughs> it would be nice to. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it'll be nice to, uh, so what do you, like, if you refer to the dudes as sausage, what do you refer to, to the uh, chicks? What, what's the? I'm not going there. <laughs> How yeah, do we refer to the she'll never, come, she'll never come on here if you start that thing. <laughs> Listen, she already knows how we get down over here, okay? You know, Hank, you've never heard that? What? You got a, on one side you have a sausage fest, on the other side you got a clam bake. Oh, clam bake. There you go. Yeah. Okay. I was just, I couldn't <laughs> think of it in the moment. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You know, so that, that would be like sausages and clams. Okay. <laughs> is, that good, is that a good combination? I don't know. Oh. I hope so. I hope it's a good combination. That's how you make pearls. Uh, maybe. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know enough. Oh, wait, we're getting into uh, weird territory here, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, <laughs> see, that, see, now American Gun Chick will never even come into the chat room. <laughs> She'll never come on the show. <laughs> so, yeah, it would be nice to get American Gun Chick to come on. Yeah, or yeah. any other, you know, any, yeah. any other uh, female gun 
celebrity out there. You know, you don't even have to be a gun you celebrity. celebrity. You just have to be yeah, somebody who knows stuff about guns. So yeah, come on and yeah. yeah, you don't even have to know that much about guns. It'd just oh, be nice. What are you looking for, Hank? Have, just a pretty face. Yeah, it'd just be nice to have someone of the female persuasion on here, so I don't have to just talk to you guys the whole time. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, I can get my. I can sharpen my flirting skills. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. My, like you need my, to do that. Yeah, you know, I mean. Oh, know, hey. What? What's up? Um, do you see where the Dems are trying to rebrand themselves with a new, like, a Hillary Clinton-type logo? Like, a better deal, they're calling it. A better deal. Is that what it is? I saw that on Twitter. It was trending, but I didn't know what it was. Well, better... I thought they were talking about healthcare stuff, or this is just... No, this is their whole persona. Hmm. Yeah, I don't care what rebranding they can do. I'll tell you how they can rebrand. Uh, it's, it's a better deal. Leave. It's a better deal with the same old sea hags out front. So yeah, that's, right. yeah. The whole thing is a better deal, better jobs, better wages, better future. Papa John's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at that. Well, see, that's why we call him Will Killer. Will right. Killer Keller just hitting them up. You know what I think? Listen. Um, I think Democrats are trying to rebrand. I think there's Republicans out there trying to rebrand. All those parties need to just fold. All those people that have been like in the two-party system that have been here for years and decades and millennia and eons, they need to go the hell away, man. Get out of the way. <laughs> go away somewhere. You know, we want freedom-loving people to run this thing, not people that want to uh, control us. Need some new faces. Yeah, not people that want to Jedi mind trick us. They, they, this they're is not, not the Jedi. same old evil. <laughs> My face ain't so wrinkled. <laughs> My face yeah. ain't so they, wrinkled. Because they're going to say all that crap, and then, uh, you know, in a couple of years, we'll see Hillary running again. You know, it's uh, it, they, they cannot be that stupid. They really can't be that stupid. Yeah, I, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. I, it's going down uh, like that. <laughs> I, I No, I don't think so. Okay. No. Think All what right, you well. want. Think what you want, but you're you're only seeing that in a percentage of the party that's so small. This mm -hmm. Hillary thing, you know, Hillary thing. A lot, of, a lot of them realize, even the ones and the big ones know that that was a big mistake. You know, I and mean, they dug their own hole and they jumped right in. It doesn't seem to me like they think Hillary was a mistake. They're supporting her and all that kind of stuff. They're rallying around her and, <laughs> right. you know. and holding her up as she's falling down, right? Or right. coughing to death. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. come on. They're trying to be more polite to Hillary because they know Hillary still has you some know. coal, but she's not really. Or, hey, they look really how the Clinton, want. what the Clinton Foundation thing all folded up now. I heard that's closed down. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. wonder why. I mean, is this coincidental? I mean, uh, oh, 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 another thing in the news today I saw, too, another person that was going to um, testify about the uh, money in Haiti with the Clintons found dead, shot in the head. Mm. Coincidental? This, uh, it maybe. No, I don't think there's no <laughs> such there's no such thing. How, you can't put those uh, how, you can't put Clintons and coincidental. How, in the same how many bucket. people how many people, you know, that have. Oh, first thing, been did this themselves um, repeatedly. How many people you know that have killed themselves? Just your friends of yours. Just boom, boom, boom. Acquaintances, boom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or end up uh, end up shot in the park. Or you know, just how many? I mean, how many? It, it just they have a uh, list that just it just continues to grow. Every time you turn around, there's another one associated with them that shot themselves. Yeah. So you know? okay, I hate to I hate to I hate to uh, cut off your Clinton rant. My rant. There. My rant. Right. Yeah, right. I know you you ranting against Clinton and everything. Um, <laughs> you know that's just that's just a that's just a. a, a are you a thing. are you are you worried the bullet's going to come through the screen? <laughs> Listen, at this point, if we're going to get taken out, it's not going to be a bullet, okay? It's going to be drones. <laughs> it's just going to be drone <laughs> drones simultaneously, and all of our things will just flicker out. Oh, uh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. So um, here's the thing. Here's the thing I was going to tell you, though. I see that um, on the – we were talking about um, the, the Florida driver – so this is um this is from CNN. So we know that's like the Communist Network news. But they said that James Matthew Bradley Jr. says he had no idea dozens of undocumented immigrants were stuffed inside the brutally hot semi truck he was driving. 
That's the story he told federal investigators who clearly don't believe him. The 60-year-old Florida man is charged with knowingly transporting undocumented immigrants. Where do you get the trailer? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's, yeah, I just wanted to update that while we're on air. because that's. Where do you get the truck? He just backed into a thing and just took off with it? I mean, well, someone just walks up to you, offers yeah. you a really large amount of money to just drive this You're trailer. not going to say what's inside? No. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I, I don't it, buy it. If the money's enough. No, well, I, I, well hold on a second. I mean, not desperate people. Yeah, I, I, I'm not an expert on driving um, tractor trailers, but I thought you had to stop along your trip and stuff like that. Like, what are they? What the hell are those way stations for? Right, on the they go to wait stations and things like that. But oh, okay. So no one, you don't, um, you don't open it up and see what's so, in there. Well, you're just driving around in a truck. I mean. I, the story doesn't. I, we don't. Maybe I don't know all the things, but it just seems strange. The guy's just driving. Oh, I don't know what's in the back. Or maybe it had like a false back or something like that. You open it up and it looks like it's a refrigerator, or you know, there's just boxes there. But um, just yeah, dead, dead Mexicans. That's all. Yeah. yeah. So I, that's I, I, uh, I, I, that's I, a I, terrible I, thing to be. I, I don't in. get. I don't get it. I, there's that. That's a lie. Sorry. Yeah. You know. Did you guys also see this in the news? Um, like these two sisters, I guess they were live streaming and they crashed, just, and that one of them died. I just looked at that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was. She, oh. She's done it. So I was reading through it. That's why I was on mute. So I was actually reading through it. Okay, <clears throat> it looks like Tell she's us. done it. Mm -hmm. a lot. So two girls in California, uh, one was eighteen, one was fourteen, were driving and uh, live streaming on Instagram at the same time. Got into a fatal accident, killed the fourteen-year-old, but the mm -hmm. girl is like the the girl that was driving has like is live streaming and is like look look i just killed my sister and like shows her and she's like i don't give a fuck i just killed her oh that so was she, that was the that she, was the one that killed killed the 14 year old sister mm. and she's yep. the, the mugshot she's just like stone cold she's now in jail yeah that's yeah. terrible yeah that's roping time sorry <laughs> yeah, it's insane yeah, that's pretty. You know. Rope, that's, that's Walter's new new uh, uh, slogan. It's roping time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've had to think. So you know, you're off of stringing up teenage girls now. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Just, Is, wait a minute. Hang on hang a second. Him, you hang what? him high. It's, what, you, what? you were one of those uh, like Wild West judges, you know. <laughs> hang him high, Keller. Well, yeah. I mean, like she's gonna grow. Guilty's up guilty, gonna right? Uh, I don't know. I don't get it. Tell me not. Guilty's guilty, right? You know, I'm. I'm a bit, <laughs> the, I get it. Unfortunately, you want to keep her in the gene pool. Mm, yeah. She doesn't. She, she doesn't care anything about life. Nothing. Yeah, Zero. She didn't like torture an animal. She went straight to humans. Just like. <laughs> yeah. The truth is, is that she learned a, a horrible lesson. The worst possible. She thing. <laughs> She's gonna have to live with it for the rest of her oh, life. Oh, poor thing. She's you got know, a dead sister. Um, that's all. I mean, I, yeah. I don't. I don't buy that. Rest of my life stuff. It doesn't fix what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it Kill doesn't. It She'll doesn't, get over it. Uh, yeah. How yeah, about like we the, just do? How about we do like a Hunger Games kind of thing? How about the eighteen-year-old girl that, in, that had the baby and then killed it and buried it in her backyard? The one that was a yeah, cheerleader. That, ha that happens all the time. Well, the, which instance are you talking about? That's happened. Was, the, was this recent? Because yeah, that happens I mean, all the time. It just happened on the news yesterday. The cute little blonde girl who was a cheerleader, that was so uh, such a loving person. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She was loving, all right. <laughs> so you know, I don't. How do you fix that? You don't fix that. Sorry. You can't fix it. Yeah. So uh, someone wants to know, Walter, what do you think that this is a totally different thing? Go for it. Go for yeah, it. Walter, what do you think of the Mini 14? I guess. They're all right. Yeah. Um, I saw some, they were talking about magazines being expensive. Yeah. And for everyone else, I just yeah. put, uh, for the rest of you guys, I just I have put one. something in the, I just put something in the chat window, in our chat window. So you guys look into that because we're going to talk about that in a second here. I'm gonna put it on the live on the live stream thing so everyone can see. Just just so we can like transit. It's it's free for all Monday for crying out loud. Yeah. It's ro it's so, roping Monday. We're roping them all today. Yeah. So. so go ahead and tell us what you think about the mini fourteen. No, the we, mini four mini 14's all right. I mean, I while have we're one. slightly distracted. I have one. Um, for like they were saying on the board on there for a long time, the mags were expensive. If you wanted real real mags. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't like I like the mini fourteen as a as a rifle. But I didn't like Ruger with the Mini 14 because he was a capitulist with the high capacity magazines. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Bill Ruger. Ruger. He he played Ruger. right into the he played right into the anti gunner's hands, trying to yep. be, trying to be this nice guy, and all he did was just screw all his customers. So yep. But at the same time, he sold all those magazines to law enforcement. 
Okay. So, you know. Um, the, the AR-15 is better in every way. Yeah, there's your. Oh, I, 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 I was I was I was just about to go to Kevin, but there's something going on with his screen. It looks like he just oh, went wow. infinite on oh, us. No. Okay, I he's think, gonna probably be coming back. I think he just yeah. got a drone strike on him something. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, let us know you're alive. You need yeah. to send up smoke signals. No, the mini, the mini fourteen. He'll be back. He'll be back. Oh the mini, yeah, he's coming back. Mini fourteen is a good platform. I mean, it's a good gun. I just yeah. think the AR has benefits to it. Over, especially the mags. The, the mags are expensive. Where you can buy a P mag for what nine or ten bucks yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mini fourteen guys are, are like thirty. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Mini thirty on the other hand, that's a cool little thing. Yeah, but they had problems with the 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 if you're if you're an accuracy kind of guy, they had problems with the yeah the the rifling and the bore diameter to the bullets that were available. So yeah, okay. yeah. Were there uh, are there kits for the Mini fourteen? Like, oh, no. like just kits to make it into other stuff. stuff. Yeah, or or just you know make it into different things. Like a bullpup or something. Uh, yeah, like bullpup kits or just different, you know, just ta like more are. tactical things. They probably are. Yeah, there's not really dug into the Mini 14 too I, much. So the, the the holy grail of Mini 14s is the Ruger, the folding stocks that Ruger made. Mm -hmm. um, Back for the AR 5.56 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, called. yeah. The, the, uh, the, those things are cool. Yeah, the GB 5.56 or what was it? Or AC 5. Yeah, one of the twos. Yeah. AC, I think AC 5.56. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the holy grail those of Mini cool. 14s. Yeah. The full autos with the folding stock. Yeah, those are neat. Oh, yeah. I thought so, so there's your answer. If you're gonna get a Mini 14 AC 556 for between ten to twenty thousand dollars, oh. you're good to go. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> um, no. Hank, Hank, when we were talking so, about the um, Caltech the other night, uh -huh. one thing I didn't mention or you didn't mention is that's perfect for a lefty. Uh, which Caltech were we talking about? The uh, uh, the um, um, the 556 the RDB, the RDB? Yeah. Yeah. with okay. the bottom with the, with the bottom eject is perfect. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that till we were off because me being a yeah. perf a lefty type person that picks up left. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm I'm in for one now. Oh, Kevin, what are you doing, man? Doing a somersault? I think Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, yeah my uh, the camera just stopped working. The whole green screen thing went away. Oh, I'm in. oh okay. So um, I don't know if you have any clue where we're at right now. <laughs> we're talking about a Mini 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you have any opinion on the uh, Mini 14? I think the mini fourteens are, are great. Um, I don't think they're as um, say user friendly as say an AR fifteen, um, <laughs> but and that's only because of what people are doing with them nowadays. I don't think anybody puts any relative training into them. I mean, they're easy to use. Don't get me wrong, but you know, most people now from just seeing ARs can pick them up and run them. I think a mini fourteen is kind of lost its luster, but on average, they're cheaper. I think the the three hundred blackout uh, platform form is a uh, nice, really cool. You know. Um, I, and they, they are cheaper. I think we got some at the store now for like, I don't know, I think they're on sale for like seven nineteen for like 300 blackouts, 762 by 39, even a couple of 223. So I think they have their place. They're awesome. I would buy one, but I'm, you know, people kind of buy stuff, but it's the same kind of concept comparing a Mini 14 to like an AR-15 when you look at a semi-automatic versus revolver. People look at it like antiquated. Oh, I don't want that old thing. It can't be cool. And it's, it's not the case. Yeah. There you go. There's a good real okay. gun. So for anyone who doesn't know, Babyface has taken the opportunity to not only show off Buckshot. Buckshot! Buckshot! He, I got headphones in. Oh, he can't, oh, hear, he can't hear. I was just uh, He's annoying me because he needs to go OUT. Oh, so I was trying to see if I could set if him If I put him on my lap, he'll stop annoying me. Oh, okay. So go ahead and show your... Go ahead and show the... Uh, you know, the wheel gap? Yeah. Go ahead and show it. There you go. Look at that. Beautiful thing. Don't you lick that. Don't, you, don't lick the pipe. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. That is the python. <laughs> That baby face. That's his pride and joy right now, all we hear. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think there's a place for every gun, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Everybody you know. go. yeah I mean, everybody's, everybody's got the one they like, you know. Yeah. yeah. And I know, not, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever shot a Mini 14. I'm trying to think back. In I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to fix that for you. I have one. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. I know that I've seen, uh, not in fancy, do a lot of videos about it. So there you go. If, you know. <laughs> Nothing um, fancy, I think, is a fan of the of the Ruger Mini 14. So somebody must have gave it to him. <laughs> no, don't even start that. Nothing fancy, <laughs> that's not how nothing fancy gets down. Okay. <laughs> nothing fancy is one of those dudes out there that yeah he buys all his guns, believe it or not. So yeah, right. Okay. At least well, yeah, that's, yeah, I believe it. Yeah, I believe in 
you know, yeah. ra rainbows and unicorns and, and all unicorns? that. Unicorns? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're a little cynical there, even though you haven't seen the crying game. Well, we're, we're going to have to listen. Your homework between now and the next show is you need to go see the crying game. <laughs> I'm going to be a bad boy like I was in school. No homework. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What you're talking about. I'm so, going to work. I'm going to work. I'm going to my job instead. Sorry. So, uh, yeah. Go IMDB and read about it. Uh. All right. So um, I know we were supposed to have this conversation the other day, but we really didn't have it. So now we're going to have an impromptu one. I sent you guys. Let's talk. Let's like transition and talk about something really interesting. Let's talk about boobies. Like we said at the top of the show, I just sent you guys a link to FHM's top 10 sexiest women for 2017. Uh, when did this come out? This came out like at the end of June. So there's like a complete list and there's some, there's definitely some hotties in there. I don't, I don't really see any, I don't see any sisters on the list. So no, there are a couple Asian girls. It looks like, yeah, yeah that doesn't, that doesn't qualify for me. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not knocking their beauty. Uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know who really put this list together, but whatever. We have to come up with our own list, guys. Have you, you see, hey, speaking of speaking of women and stuff, did you see that? Um, there's a like an app or I forget what it is where it where it, where it takes like this one girl, and they take that one girl and put her different parts of the country, the world, to what is beautiful in different parts of the world. What's thought? Yeah, I've different. seen that. So some of the some of the hips are bigger, some of the boobs are bigger, some of the you know it's all. It's all molded to what people like from supposedly yeah. in different parts of the world. So, yeah, I think uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and your booty beholden a lot. I don't know, something like so there's some kind of line. There's some kind of line about that. <laughs> what movie is that from? <laughs> I'm trying to remember the line. It's one of those. Um, uh, what's the name of the guy? Uh, oh man, the guy that was in the. Um, he was in Fifth Element, and I'm trying to remember his name right now. Bruce Willis? Chris Tucker. No, Tucker. The Chris, yeah, Chris, Chris Tucker. Tucker. There was some movie with Chris Tucker. I think it was Money Talks or something like that. And he said, uh, beauty is in the high, eye of the beholder in, in something about your booty. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I got it now. I got it. I totally messed this up. He said, it's not your booty. It's your beauty. It's your booty. Yeah, it's the, no, it's definitely the booty. <laughs> it's in Djibouti. In, in some places, in some places. Yeah. And and it's all different times, right? Like everyone, you know, people. They all look like. People change those things. Is that the same with guys? We should ask women, like, if like, what do women care about guys? Is it like the size of the sausage or is it how much money you have? Or is it both money. of those two things? <laughs> it's more resources. It could be in yeah, money. I think it's probably. Resources, power. Yeah, yeah it's, it's security. Yeah, I'm gonna say for the women, like you are really attractive if you're really wealthy. I guarantee you, Lola would 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 like give me less of a difficult time if I was just like rolling in the dough, just like here you go, woman, take some money, go shopping. Oh, uh, she's still kicking. She still kick your butt around. Uh, no. Yeah. I yeah, think I think it's um, it's got a lot to do with a little bit of both. I also think you can be very wealthy, and if you're not, um, you know, doing the things to satisfy your woman. Then yeah. you'll just be a wealthy guy getting cheated on. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, also, I think lots of women like bad boys, right? I think even even when they even when they grow grow older and get more mature, they still like the bad boys. Projects, huh? Yeah, projects. Yeah. What? Oh, oh, like trying somebody to somebody they can work on and build up. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, a mistake. You can't, you can't, you can't do that. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> do you think do you think that's the root of women liking the bad boys? Because or is it like uh, you know? strength they see the bad boy is rebellious and he's like adventure he's alpha he's yeah well you, you know the, the one thing i used to argue with a lot is when you're talking to girls they'd be like you know talking about the whole bad boy phase one of the general arguments was well because i feel safe and i know he won't let anything happen to me i'm like well all you got to do is date a two-way guy you'll be all right like <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, like but, but that doesn't make sense because a lot of the bad boys smack their women around mm. exactly but i guess for some people not saying women like to be hit but i guess some women do you know, and I guess if that's something you desire. You desire yeah. that, but, you know, I never got it. I'm like, you do realize that just because he's pretending to be tough in front of you and a room full of men, that'll probably all go away. Yeah. You know, well, I think a lot. Yeah. I think because 
because we all know that women like the bad boys, I think women like the bad boys more than money or a whole bunch of other things. Um, I think there's guys out there that just pretend to be the bad boys, especially if you can't be the, like, you know, the, the beautiful guy, right? Because I know when I was in high school, for example, the real beautiful guys, women, a lot of, you know, women were into that, obviously. But I think, like, um, every single chick out there, for the, well, let me not say every single before I get in trouble. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna already get in trouble. But I think most women out there are lesbians. Women have like lesbian what? DNA. So, really? Well, I just, I'm just, I'm just saying, and and I'll tell you why I think that because uh -huh. Uh -huh. they're always attracted to the guys that look like girls. You ever notice that? Look at how many, look at how many women Prince got. You know, or the he market. had lots of money too. Yeah, lots of money. Uh, yeah, lots of money. I don't. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But he had lots of. He had a nice limo and nice clothes. And I, don't it, I don't think it. I don't think it. I don't think it was so much that. There's lots of. I mean, not lots just in drugs. the not just in the eighties and stuff like that, but even nowadays, all the you know, the, there's a lot of guys out there that look like chicks, and that's who. When especially when they're young, I think women like guys who look like girls. That's just my thing, and I think that's because they have like. Most of, mostly, not everyone. I said that have lesbianic tendencies. <laughs> anyone, anyone who agrees with me or disagrees with me, go ahead. Uh, I know you guys know I'm speaking the truth, but you just don't want to have uh, my back on this one. You want to uh, leave me? I can't, I can't rock with that one. No, <laughs> no, I don't know about oh, that. Man. Okay, all right. No, you, no, you guys know. You know. You know it's true. You know it's true. <laughs> it's built into the DNA. There's a few guys out there, like there's some dudes out there that are gay. I get that, you know. There's dudes out there that are like bisexual or whatever. Most dudes, you know, tend to be into women and, and that's pretty much it. But um, you know, I'm I'm gonna stick with that one. Anyone who wants to debate me on that, go ahead. I think that most women have lesbianic tendencies there. I said it three times now. So it ain't working. We can't we can't go back What's, what, you, guys, you guys never heard about this i'm the one that's got to school you on this and drop knowledge on you i i don't know you're dropping knowledge you're just dropping bullshit over here. <laughs> i think it's true i think it's true. so why is it that so like why is it like all these rocks like i remember like when i growing up in the 80s all these rock star dudes would had long hair makeup that, that was dresses that, that, and was all that, kind of stuff. that was a fad you know come on yeah just but okay but why was it a fad who liked it who was it that liked it? Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, but uh -huh. you know, push come to shove, it wasn't it wasn't they weren't they weren't doing the girl haircut when it was backstage, baby. So um <laughs> Yeah, but that's what I'm okay. All right. Whatever, Walter. I can't see my wisdom. I know there's some people out there that that uh you know And then look what happened look what happened in the nineties. They got that shitty Seattle grunge garbage, dirty and dirty and nasty and everything else. Yeah, so hey. No, I think like rock stars and all that kind of stuff, and even a lot of actors. I mean, even now, Justin Bieber. Why is it that? Why is it on? Uh, well, actually, everyone is portrayed by a chick on Saturday Night Live. But I was going to say on Saturday Night Live, Justin Bieber is portrayed by a chick. Let's be honest. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. hey, is that you a, guys never heard? You never heard? Is, that, is, is that a real word? <laughs> yes, it's a word. I said it. The word. The word. You never heard that word before. No, well, lesbianic. No. Okay. No. Is well, that from? Is that from a sci-fi movie? Like from the no. from the girls, the, the women of Lesbos. Are you Are you guys all saying that you never heard the word lesbianic before? No, I've never heard that. I don't know. Is that like from the future? Was like. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, sure. I don't see an uh, entry in Urban Dictionary. I don't see anything else here. Man. Uh, yeah, let's be honest. It's been out for a long time. I'm sorry, dude. That's, that's been out since the '80s. When the hell were you guys born? This thing's been out since the '80s. Let's be honest. All right, Hank. Okay. Hank, it's a question for you, Hank. Lesbian. What? Where does that come from? Lesbian? Didn't you the just word? Didn't the you word. just the Isle refer, of Didn't you just refer to the Isle of Lesbos? Okay. Well, then you know that. Then I'll let you have that. Yes. Oh, what you think? You you thought that I didn't know something about lesbians, really? <laughs> well, obviously you know more. You more than more than I do. <laughs> because, yeah, I mean, come on now. I'm not trying to say I'm a uh, uh, you know I'm not trying to say I'm an expert on the subject, but I have done a lot of research. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why have you done a lot of research? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I'm a dude. Was that a project or something? <laughs> was, was, Okay, I don't know what's wrong with you. So you guys don't know anything about lesbians. Wow. Okay. Now I'm doubting you guys. 
Or you got I think you guys are just fronting real hard. Like how like much you know. how much is a is a heterosexual guy supposed to know about <laughs> lesbian comics? Like what uh, a lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Chris <laughs> Chris Bull says lot. that's because but Bieber's a chick. So just <laughs> 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 okay, whatevs. <laughs> oh wait, now we got like two Kevins. I don't know what yeah, just happened, I'm Kevin. Up on yeah, I'm, I'm hanging up on this one. Oh, you got the computer. Okay, oh, there we go. There we go. Full on green. Now. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but if you search my, if you go through my, uh, you know, my porn stuff or whatever, if you infiltrated my computer, you're gonna find a lot of lesbian stuff out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hey, let's, let's dive into this a little bit into the psyche of you. What? Are you? Okay. Are you? I'm just asking. So, uh -huh. are you like hating the lesbianix as you call it because you secretly love it? No, I'm not. No, not at all. I I, I don't secretly love it. I I publicly, openly, wholeheartedly love it. <laughs> I don't know how you guys got that twisted. All right, I'm just asking. No, I totally love it. It's awesome. Even even the dark side of it. Uh, what's the dark side? Oh, dude. Oh, you're talking about like oh, like oh. You're, you're referring to chicks that are like overly like like butch chicks or something like that. Is that what you're talking about? Mm, yeah. No, I'm. Uh, yeah, I like uh, the, the I like the uh, lipstick the lipstick lesbian. You like stuff. the porn about, the porn. Yeah, not the real. Like yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, fake, it's like fake stuff. Yeah, it's like vegetarians <laughs> and then like real vegans. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hank eats fish oh. on Fridays as well. You know? <laughs> so you're not looking for Wanda. Know. You're not looking for Wanda hey. or Harley, then, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I'm the only one of you guys that's being honest about it, but that's fine. I mean, that's all right, guys. I will, I will say, Hank, I, I, I knew we were going to talk about some gun stuff today. Some news. Uh, I didn't know I was going to uh, term. Yeah. Here's you what know, we I need to do. Fine. We need to get a. We need to get a expert lesbian on the show. That's what we need to do. So anyone out there that has someone that would be a, an expert lesbian for us to bring on uh, to set us straight. What is an expert? Who, who certifies that? How do you certify? <laughs> well, I, we'll have to see proof. That's all. Did you have like years of uh, years of experience under your belt? Is that what how that works or over I your belt? Know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know that much. I don't know enough to know. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you be the judge okay. on that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's. That's it. That's what we get. I don't know how we wound up on that subject. Uh, you did it. You did it. That's how. <laughs> <laughs> when your inner desires out, man. Yeah. I, I can, yeah. I can. Oh, oh. Uh, let's say lipstick onic. Is that a new word too? No. Uh, that's no. Just I don't know. I was just trying to make the. Lipstick. I was just trying to make the point to you guys that I think a lot of you guys don't get that lots of women. It's easier for women to do like us as dudes. If you're a normal dude, you have like uh, things against doing stuff with dudes, right? So you don't ever see dudes when we're growing up taking a shower together. No, yeah. Well, well, I guess <laughs> in sports or whatever, but you know, no, I mean like in the know, sports okay. locker room thing. But you don't see dudes like kissing each other to learn how to kiss and all that kind of nonsense. Where do you find I don't think right? you see but women you... do that either. I'm just oh, throwing yeah, that yeah. out there. No, well, you see it. It happens. I've seen it in movies. No way! I've totally seen it in movies. <laughs> and Saddam, Saddam Hussein has a portal, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. You guys, okay. you guys There's more movies. truth in pornos than whatever you're talking about with Saddam Hussein. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking Walter's got more truth in him. <laughs> Okay, I don't know about you guys. Okay, here, this is my last evidence, and then I'm moving on from this. Okay. Who here has ever been to a strip club with any kind of chicks in the strip club? Not as strippers, but just, you know, in the strip club. I've been, I've been in the strip club. Okay, so... Oh, but, but with a girl... With a accompanied girl. by women is what you're saying, right? Yeah. yeah, so nowadays yeah. you go into strip clubs and stuff like that, you see... Uh, I mean, you see more women sometimes than you see even dudes in the strip club get like, and, and it's like women stripping in the strip club and you see women in there. So I guess, you know, but you guys are like fuddy duddies. You don't want to admit stuff. You're all scared. I know, I know the truth. You, you asked You're a question, you asked a question and I don't have an answer for you. Oh, really? Cause you never been up in this. No, no. Okay. Well, you said, well, well, do you believe this? What he's saying? Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. you said with a girl. Yeah, have you ever been to a strip club? Yeah, you've never been in a strip club and seen women in the strip no, club? No, no. Do you mean accompanied by a girl or? Yeah, either one. As, either as, one. A, as, as somebody, no. Well, I've been in a strip club. 
Yeah. Okay. But, but it was only dudes in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. When was this? In the 60s? <laughs> oh, man. Hank's just taking <laughs> shots all over the Have you been in there lately? I'm just, I'm just asking. I don't make it. I don't frequent them <laughs> not, lately. No. Yeah, not lately. Yes, I know. Okay. But I'm just trying. I'm just saying. We, <laughs> we'll, we'll get feedback on this. This hey, is a question. Hey, on this hey, video. I'll tell you what. Next time there's a Super Bowl. Come right. down to Tampa and go to Mons Venus during the Super Bowl. There won't be a single chick in there besides the ones dancing. Uh, I, I doubt it. You. I doubt yeah. it. Yeah. I doubt it. I don't know. I've been in strip clubs like within the last, I don't know when's the last. I'm trying to think back. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Let me clean this up. Lola is in the building. After all. Yeah. I yeah. Can know. <laughs> yeah. But okay. You know what? Let's just pose this question out there. Like, who thinks that I'm right that women are more likely to have lesbianic tendencies? that dudes are likely to have, I don't know, what's the, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know even know how to put it. Um, uh, <laughs> gabionic tendencies, yeah. I don't know. Gabionic. Well, it's more so. accepted generally in society that women can kind of do. Yeah, that women. I mean, yep. That's the only thing I can say. Yeah. Oh, that's the only thing you guys are gonna admit. Okay, fine. Well, it's more accepted for them. And yeah. guys like you think it's cool, so. Oh, guys like me. <laughs> oh, thanks, <laughs> I'm Will. I'm with Will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Will. Okay, listen, someone wants to know what gun you're holding, Kevin, because you've got, okay, Kevin's got a rifle. Let's so, uh, this, this rifle here is, um, this is my hog hunter. Um, this is my uh, AR-15, well, it's AR-15, it's 300 blackout. Mm. Uh, has, oh, uh, that looks good. Uh, you might be able to see the... Oh, yeah, hold it up, yeah. Sharp Brothers lower on that guy. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so that's like, so instead of a skull, which I've seen on some lowers, this is the hog... For everyone who's listening on our, um, who's listening to this on audio only, it's pretty good. It's good. Looks good, man. Is that gray? Yeah, this is sniper gray. My guys down in Midwest Cerakote Cerakoted the whole rifle, so it's got like chevrons on the other side of it. Cool. Uh, Stargate. <laughs> I don't. I don't see a third pin though. I think there's a problem here. What well, third? What you talking about? Third pin for the trigger for the fire control. Third, third pin for the fully automatic. <laughs> oh. oh um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have. I'm not Walter. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't have one of those. But uh, actually, this thing is, and then I got the Trigicon four by thirty two on top of it. Now that, that, that then there you go. Good. That, that just, that the Trigicon just trumped the, uh, the pin. So, okay. so here um, I will, t I will tell you right now that every dude has full auto. <laughs> every dude has full auto tendencies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish the sucker was full auto. Then I actually, I have a hog wow. problem. And the, the sad part is I've never shot one. I built the gun to do it. And then I haven't got a sidearm to do it. So this is a Glock 40 and 10 Ooh. mil. Oh, you met? Oh. Um, is that red I, on the inside? How long? Yeah, I had it scare coated all the way through. Oh, that's that's good. How, how long is that barrel? <laughs> this, is a, this is a six inch boy. Just gotta, oh, that's, oh, oh, oh so man, that's good looking. That's good looking, that's that's good looking Kev. I like yeah. that, man. Yeah. They were both the, the same time, same paint. I actually had the burl for with the red. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind that's of like from uh, remember when remember the Blade movies? Remember when Blade had, had had like his leather his leather jacket was red inside? I don't know who remembers that, but I do. I guess I'm old. <laughs> this Baby face nice. doesn't know about that. So this is in case the hog gets too close. This is a 10 mil. Oh, that's oh hard. man, that is a sweet gun. Very cool, man. Who did this work for you on these guns, Sarah? Uh, the guys, my, my guys here in uh, Bridgeton, Missouri, they're called, um, you can look them up. I'll probably throw the link over here. They're called uh, Midwest Cerakote. Uh, John Very and Adam nice. down there, uh, Midwest Cerakote. And they, they do take your guns. You can send them into them and they'll do work. They're FFL and they got their SOT and all that good old stuff. Um, but they do awesome work. They do all my guns. And the stippling job is like, Second to none. It was the first time I ever seen a guy, you know, a Glock gives you the, those uh, those plastic beaver tails. Mm -hmm. They actually stippled that too. Oh, wow. that's Send impressive. Out. Yeah, without without going through the uh, plastic and screwing it up. Um, so it's got a full full custom stippling job on it. Uh, then I got the XX Big Doc sight on it. Got a lollipop oh, sight. Oh, hey, yeah. It's, cool. miss, it's missing a switch on the back. Come on. Now. I don't. <laughs> I don't have switches. Full <laughs> auto tendencies. Okay, so what Full trigger do you, what trigger do you have on there? What trigger you got on there? The the trigger. This is the standard Glock trigger. Um, and then I had it ported. I had the when I had the windows cut out. We sat down and I told them what I wanted the gun to do. I understand what I like my guns to do. And I was like, hey, here's what I needed to do. Here's what I have in mind. And they're very smart guys. Said, okay, 
let's bring it to life. And so even when I was like, you know, I want to keep that muzzle rise a little flat, you know, if I'm fighting a hog that's, you know, five or six yards from me and I can't swing my rifle. And so that's why we even have the, the custom porting job down on top. So, yeah, just yeah. Got so hold, on, actually... hold on one second here. Uh, 50 uh, stitches steel says that's a Glock branded light. Yeah, this is actually a Glock light on it. It's one I had in my safe and I just threw it on it. Oh, yeah, a... cool. Uh, but yeah, this is, um, this is a, this is my hog hunting side arm. That's cool. Yeah, man. You... And of course, it's MOS. So if you wanted to put a red dot or whatever on the back of it, oh, you know. man, that thing's got All right. everything. All right, so where where's the matching knife? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's funny. My knife is actually. Upstairs. I have um. You gotta have a big old blade um, if you hunt hogs. <laughs> the guys over at um, what's that? Uh, uh God, man, Benchmade. Uh, I actually got a Benchmade knife with my my company logo and everything on it. So, uh, the Armadatus is the automatic knife. Um, nice. You gotta come down and shoot with us on the hacienda, man. I mean, you know. Yeah, I, you know what? I do. I kept. I was actually um, messing with uh, who was that? Argo, I think last time said so we got to plan a trip down there and make some out of it. Oh yeah, yeah, hell yeah, bring Argo. Yeah, yeah it, would be, it would be fun. I don't have as yeah. many toys as the guy that brings bazookas on the camera, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't bring bazookas yet to the hacienda. I don't know when the hell the bazooka. No, I don't, I don't think you got enough range for that. I don't have that license. Yeah. yeah. So someone wants to know, Kevin, do you have a um, suppressor for that three hundred blackout? Um, no, I currently do not. I am going to grab one. I was waiting, and I forget the model number of it. They were sold out for a while, but it's um, God, man. It's it's the one that comes. Uh, it's, I think it's called the Genesis. If I might be forgetting, but it's it's one Silence Code puts out, and it's not by Gem Tech, but it's it's got all the different baffles. So you can do like three hundred. You can do any thirty cal. You can do um, nine mil, forty five, anything but twenty two. The, the Omega. Omega. There you go. There you go. See, That's what I have. Yeah, Babyface is the expert of of Silencer Co. Oh, oh he talk, he's talking to Babyface. Yeah. If love. only Silencer Co. would actually, like, Babyface is, is a walking billboard. Hey, Hank. <laughs> oh, look, look, he's got the T-shirt. <laughs> Hold on a second. Wait, 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 wait. I've got to lock it on you, Babyface. Go ahead and show that again. People think I'm just BSing. Look at what he's got on. Oh, he's a Silencer Mark. That's yeah. what this dude, I love Silencer stuff. If it's not like uh, the, what is it, the groom's drinking party, it's a Silencer Co. t Yeah, it's, those are the only two shirts I ever wear to Hank's. Yeah. So, it's the only um, two shirts I own, Hank. That's the problem. Yeah. So oh, did you, do you have that? Do you, um, wait, do you have the paperwork on that Omega? This week or next week, oh, okay, I'm cool. pretty sure it'll be this week or next week. Yeah. I've waited a year for that paperwork to come back. So now okay. that one, um, a baby fake. Now that one is now, if I'm not mistaken, it does. I know it doesn't do 22, and it's another handgun caliber. It doesn't do right. Uh, no, it can't do 45. But oh wait, you're talking. You're, are you talking about the? Yeah, the Omega. You don't. It's not really a pistol can. The Harvester. You can no, not the Harvester. Mm -hmm. That Omega uh, sound. Oh God. The Omega is a 30 cal, and I love it. That's one that I have. It's yeah. it's great. Does everything. Everything rifle. Yeah, we'll bring that to you guys when that uh, when hey, that Hank, comes up. What's up? I forgot to mention to you that I've got a Gemtech can sitting that I never haven't even used. Oh, uh, uh, what, what is what? it? I've got I, well, aside from the one I brought out, but I have the the one called the one. The Gemtech one. The one. The one. It, it's yeah. rated all the way up to three hundred magnum. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, and why have you not shot this thing, Walter? What's the matter with you? You just got so many things to bring. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, like, uh, and, uh, just for didn't um, our guys, uh, Smith and Wesson, just buy Gym Tech? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um. And, yeah. Yeah, they did. Uh, Actually, this is a freedom group. And I have another. Um, I have another can on order with them that I haven't received yet. Um. So wait, hold on a second, Babyface. Was that Smith and Wesson or Freedom Group? Smith and Wesson. No, I'm saying as long as it's not Freedom Group. Oh, as long as it's freedom. not Freedom Group. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's Smith and Wesson positioning themselves. So, yeah. yeah. Um, um, there's going to be a few other companies that are going to get um, bought up. Okay, so folks want to know, uh, Kevin, how much is that 300 black build? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> see how close my mic is. Hold on. All right. So, um, if we're talking paint and everything, if we're talking auto Cerakote work, work, um, so this is this complete upper is um, all um, advanced armament court. So it's a complete 300 black. I don't want to mess with the gas porting and all that. I just wanted it to work. So I bought the complete upper from them. Um, that upper alone, when I bought it, even with the discount I got, I want to say it came in at about $7.99 just for the upper. Um, this 
the C, the. Uh, hold on one second, Jock. I think it, I think his name is. I'm gonna just mention a, a comment that someone's saying. I think it's Jock Carpenter said those guns are giving me lesbianic tendencies. <laughs> Good one. Calm down. Okay. But, uh, with the paint, uh, with, with, if we're counting, if we're counting the Trigicon and everything, I don't know, man. It's 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 right about thirty four, thirty five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Woo! Nice build, oh, wait, man. No, wait, man. Hang on. I heard a woo from Babyface. <laughs> That's a hell of a build. How much you spend on that python? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking oh, about right. that. The pythons, how much did they Four grand or whatever? Yeah. No, no, it wasn't four grand. It was it. What? It was like. I got twenty one hundred in this one. Yeah, yeah. And you don't yeah, even have an ACOG on yeah, top of that. Thing. I need it. Yeah, we need to put an ACOG right here. Oh, man. That would mess it up. Come on now. What you need is a nice holster. That's what you need. Yeah, you need to talk yeah, to something Sam, about that. Sam there. Andrews, if you're listening. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> we'll, maybe, maybe we'll talk to Sam. I'm trying to get Sam to come on this show with us. But uh, if he ever goes God, and looks, if Sam goes and looks at one of these shows, he's not coming on. Does he have any lesbianic tendencies? <laughs> Just title this with lesbianic <laughs> tendencies. Lesbian. Does he have lesbianic leather? Okay. Well, let me tell you something right now. I guarantee you, Sam will know what I'm talking about with the with, with the lesbianic tendencies. Well, How much you want to Le Lesbianic leather. <laughs> um, well, forget it. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. <laughs> you, know, you know the sad part about this getup, though? This between his, this hand, and his handgun, I don't even want to get into it, this set cost. Here's the sad part about it, I will openly admit. They are virgins. They've been shot, but they've never shot you anything. Never. So, oh, man, you need to go for a hunt. Dude, I'm, okay, here's my problem. I literally put out a post like somebody helped me because, you know, I'm one thing I'm not is a hunter, um, but I want to oh. shoot hogs. Don't ask me why I woke up with a dream one day and until it happens, life. I do not. too. I want to real bad. Uh, so I'm even hoping that since uh, NRA is in Dallas next year, there will be some. Oh, yeah, that could be done. I just, uh, had an, I just had an idea. Yeah, Walter, yeah. wasn't there someone that we know yeah. that, that does hog hunting? Gary, so, Gary Byers. He does the helicopter hog hunting. Remember? Yeah, what's the name of what's oh, the name oh, of his company? I can't remember right now. I'll have to look it up. But his his name is Gary Byers. Yeah, there's a there's a guy that we know that you can go hog hunting out of a you can do it out of a, a helicopter. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. I, so, do a hog I I I have killed a few hogs in my life. Oh, um, lucky. Um, some with a rifle and some with a knife. Um, Dang. Oh yeah. Knife? With dogs and a knife, yeah. Yeah, that's the real deal. Here in the South, in Florida, I know at least. That's Florida, how yeah, you can you can kill a hog with anything. Nobody yeah, they, well, they, don't I mean, they use they use knives because, like, with the dogs, right? When the dogs yeah. go out, they want to. Yeah, you don't want to don't. shoot. You don't want to shoot the dog. Yeah. So, but what happens is the, the the catch dogs catch it, and then and then when somebody runs up. The <laughs> He heard shoot oh, the dog. Excited, no. Buckshot heard shoot the dog. Buckshot, let's right go off. get some hogs. Come on, Buckshot. <laughs> like we couldn't have I don't even have sound effects here. Buckshot <laughs> went off on cue. But no, they just, you know, uh, dogs grab it around the neck, somebody grabs the hind legs and you just poke it. Yeah. You don't ever I'm gonna tell you something. The dudes where I live, you don't want to mess with those dudes, man. They are scary dudes. What they do to hogs. And the knives that those guys carry around on them. See, I carry around stuff like this. I want to show you guys this before I forget. See, I'm wearing this uh, BMH shirt right here. Okay. This is from um, our, our friend, uh, you know, Brandon Hernandez, BMH Knives. Right? Yeah, he, he, he had, so he, check, he, check this out. Look at that. <laughs> Look at this axe that he made for me. Look at that awesome beautifulness. Hold I don't, on, let me let me lock my screen so everyone can see the awesomeness on this axe right here. It's I a little think, baby axe, but yeah, I, don't, I don't think we're gonna go do any hogs on that. <laughs> this is my like I could chop up a hog with this, but uh, well, that's, that's like uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know, a, that's a fantasy. A piece of the hog that's already been cooked and served on a plate. Oh. You don't do bacon, so what do you what do you mean? Yeah, well, they, yeah, exactly. But you know, but look at that though. That's pretty cool, man. That's like a little mini survival knife that I can have. Literally put that in my pocket. That's I was cool. talking to him about making a, a a bigger one of these, and he was like, "Okay, I'm gonna send you a little prototype." So I wanted to share that BMH knives. That's really that cool. A, that is a very cool knife, but the fact you don't eat bacon makes me think about these lesbian <laughs> tendencies you might have. <laughs> oh, I definitely have lesbianic tendencies. Trust me, <laughs> my no. tendencies are totally lesbianic. <laughs> um, I'm on. I'm, I'm on. I'm friends with him on Facebook. Oh, GT, right well, that's, there. That's, hey, you know what? Hey, you know what will be cool? What? How, how about that? How about? I know I'm always trying to orchestrate some stuff. Look, man, I need to lose my hog genity. 
Oh, okay. my God. <laughs> Everyone's just going to start making up words now. Oh, dear. You just opened up a real big can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. I need to lose my hog I need to, I need to drop a hog, man. This this has to, I don't know about it. I'm, I don't like knives. You got to understand my history from, you know, jail and stuff like that, things that poke people I don't like. Right. But I carry one. Don't get me wrong. But as far as, like, running up on a hog, I don't have the confidence. I want to shoot one. We need to, we need to plant a hog. Yeah, someone, what was it, uh, Walter, did you find out the name of that company? Yeah, yeah, it's um, G&T Outfitters. Okay, G&T Outfitters. Okay, cool. Yeah. G okay, so G&T oh, Outfitters. I think, yeah, I think that's those guys, yeah. Yeah, so let's do this. Listen, we've been going, we've been going for like an hour and 45 minutes. Let's uh, wrap it up here. I want to give Kevin first a chance to uh, plug the event that he's having. Uh, yes. So uh, for you guys that might have missed it, and I'm sorry that this, my screen failed, but you can go back in the comments uh, early on. I know the link was put in the comments uh, toward the beginning of the thread. So we're having an event. It's an anti-violence event, but it's from a different spin. It's not so much of people marching, yelling, put the guns down. It's um, about getting to the root issues of violence. So there we're going to have uh, mental health, uh, mental health professionals. I'm sorry. We're going to have um, uh, op job opportunities, financial experts. We're going to talk about uh, gun control and the true roots of it and why you should not support it. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to give people all the assets and the, uh, the things they need to fix things that make them go out and commit violent acts. So we're going to take care of not only the, the mindset of the people to get them to prevent them, I should say, from committing violent acts. We're also going to take care of your family while you're there. So that's why your kids can come. We're going to entertain them for free for you. We're going to feed your entire family for free. And if you have to catch public transportation, uh, which around St. Louis is not that long. The city's not that big. Uh, we're going to reimburse you for public transport. That's going to be held Saturday, August the 5th at 1488 Belt Avenue, just like the belt you wear around your waist. Uh, that's at the Good Samaritan Baptist Church in St. Louis, Missouri, and the zip code is 63112. If you need more information, you can click the link above in the comments, or you can call 314-699-4466. Also check out, um, is it Knock Firearms Training? Yeah, you can yeah. go to, uh, on Facebook. On Facebook, you can go to NOC for no other choice, but just NOC space firearms training. And you can see um, the promo videos. We actually got a lot of videos out there now. I think it's four now where you actually see me in the inner city having real conversations with people and how they feel about the things. Because as much as we put it on the news, you got these guys in suits trying to tell you what to do to help people. They don't know. The people know what they need. They understand things better. So those conversations are actually taking place in the environments that make the news every day. Cool, cool. Walter, what about you? You got um, something you guys, or should I ask Will? Because <laughs> I know where this is going to go. Okay, yeah, you know, um, just doing the normal stuff on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Um, they have a YouTube channel, Safety Ever Firearms. Also, yeah. appliance death, if you're into shooting running lawnmowers and weed whackers appliance and stuff. Death. We used to do some of that back. Mower death. Mower death. Mower death. Sorry. Uh, Mower death. I wanted to yeah. do a point. I, I, I wanted to do a point death, and I never, I never bought the, uh, yeah. the site. But yeah. Okay. Mower death. Cool. Yeah, anyway, also, yeah. also, don't forget, we uh, did some videos with 904 Outdoors yep. and uh, Locks and Load, right? Locks and Loaded. Yep. 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 Yeah. Uh, I think it's Locks and Load. Locks and yes, Load. Yes, it is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're some Jacks, some Jacksonville, Florida guys. Yep. So there you go. Um, baby face. What do you want? Come on. Where's the videos, Babyface? I, I don't have much going on right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Get some videos. 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 <laughs> Walter, you need to send Babyface a project, man. He obviously has no projects going on. Pull out some of your projects. Oh, uh, well, I, I got that. I'll, I'll get it to you. I'll get yeah, it. we'll get some projects. Yeah. These, these are... And Go ahead. Oh, things in pieces. We like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll work on that. Yeah, so also I want to go back for a second to uh, BMH Knives. Look, this this came with a sheath, guy. Okay. Guys, see that? Came with a sheath. And I said Brandon Hernandez. I don't know why. It's Blake. Oh. Blake Blake Hernandez from BMH Knives you, came you with had, a sheath. You had him on Check a few shows out. ago, right? Yes, he was on a he was on a, he is on the uh on an episode with us. I can't remember what episode number. He makes these knives, he makes the holster and all that kind of stuff. So, shout out to Blake. You know, he also gave away those uh, prints. He's the guy that gave away the the Batman prints that we did. So I want to like thank everyone for coming on the show. Thanks everyone for all the comments and all that kind of good stuff. And good. you know, um, Kevin, I, I want to invite everyone to to go out and check out your event. I want to give a shout out to everyone that sponsors us, and that would be Rancy LP, Andrew's Custom Leather, 
Safety Harbor Firearms, and of course, Big Daddy Guns, giving us the space here to, to make all this trouble. <laughs> Free for all Mondays, oh man. <laughs> it's, it's always a fun time. And uh, I especially wanna thank the people that support us on Patreon. We're on Patreon slash Hank Strange. That's it. I hope you guys had a good time. We'll be back tomorrow. Don't forget to check us out on iTunes. We've got like 20 episodes up on iTunes right now. Peace. Peace out.